Hello, and welcome to Legally Cute, a speedrun show showcasing all sorts of cute and cozy video games. I am Midnight Vesper, subbing in for Cutie Roo SR, as Cutie Roo is at RPG Limit Break this week. Couple announcements for you all, just so you're all aware. Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online will be January 8th through the 15th. Head to gamesdonequick.com for more information. Game submissions ha are closed, but the second submission period for games will be released uh, for games released after September 1st is coming up November 6th through the 12th. See games.quick.com, gamesdonequick.com for more details. And of course, Fright for Tales is a one-day event on October 23rd to celebrate spooky season with dark, scary, or horror-themed speedruns from the Frame for Tales community. Use exclamation mark Fright in Twitch chat to see the schedule. And of course, with more horror-themed things on October 31st, we have a Halloween spooktacular special hosted by Ekdysis and Smooth Operative. And if you want to know what Games and Quick is up to, Use exclamation mark links in Twitch chat for all things GDQ. Your subs, Prime Gaming subs, GIF subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel help support Games Done Quick, both with Hotfix and with Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online costs. So please consider subscribing if you enjoy the daily GDQ, GDQ content. And of course, finally, hello YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, please sure, be sure to press the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, head on over to GamesDoneQuick, twitch.tv slash GamesDoneQuick if you're interested in looking at our live content starting weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. Now, for today's episode of Legally Cute, we're showcasing two kind of uniquely horror and kind of indie cute games. Coming up later, we're going to have the indie game Yuppie Psycho. I hope I pronounced that correctly, but first, we have one of the beautiful feline games that are out there that came out this year it is going to be stray with nikki games 11 how are you doing nikki hey i'm doing good how are you doing i'm fantastic i can't wait for this i know i'm excited too i'm nervous but i'm excited <laughs> <laughs> that's always good all right so i'll count it down so three two one Go. So what made you kind of want to learn off and speed run this game? It's funny, like, as I was casually playing it for the first time, I was like, yeah, this is going to be a really good game to speed run. <laughs> like, because, like, just the motion that you do during the game is just so, like, smooth for the most part. I was like, this is going to be a good game to speed run. Because the first game I learned how to speed run was GTA 3. So that's very different from this. But I knew from what I know at speed running with GTA 3, I was like, this is going to be a good one to learn. So let me just do it. I was gonna say that's a that's a transition. Yeah, and this is my second game that I took serious with speed running. Serious. I'm like a casual speed runner, but there's nothing wrong about that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, because for me, like speed run or just video games in general needs to be fun. Like I don't want to be stressed out when I'm playing video games, which is why I don't like the Souls games. Um, they're not for me. They stress me out. So <laughs> if I'm speed running, I want to have fun with it, you know? Oh, yeah. No, I get that. I'm in the same way. Yeah, the first, I would say one, two, I think like three-ish chapters of this game are pretty chill. And then once you get to the slums, that's where it pops off. And I like the slums, so. <laughs> and I like this part because it's like, like always kind of like the, I guess, mama getting taken care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because everyone calls this group of cats like a family. 
And it, I find that interesting because when I first played a game, I saw them more as like friends, not family, but I kind of like the idea of like family. It makes, I don't want to spoil anything, but it makes what happens next a little bit more, you know, dramatic, so. Oh, there's a good question in chat that um, I didn't think about since I've played this game. Does this cat have a name? No. None that I know of. Um, I know a lot of people on Twitter were saying how they named their cat like while they're playing it, but like no name is given to the cat that I know of during the game. Uh -huh. So everyone like names the cat. Maybe we can have chat name this one. Mm, maybe. I like that idea. Yeah. In my community, um, one of my users was trying to spell out Kappa, but they spelt it wrong, so they put Kapap. So I said, we have to name the cat that. So in my oh. community, we call him Kapap. <laughs> <laughs> but I was so sad. Like, when I first beat the game, I was like, oh! Maybe because, you know, I'm on console, so I can't do the mods. I was like, oh, maybe when I beat the game, I can, you know, replay the game and I can choose like one of these cats, like look like one of these other cats. No, <laughs> <laughs> you're stuck with this one, which is fine. He's cute, too. But, you know, it would be cool to be able to play something else on console without mods and yeah. stuff. Yeah, I do enjoy that there is a just a press circle to meow button. Mm hmm it's and you know what it's functional later on in the game so it's not just for cuteness which i appreciate i like functional cuteness so yeah <laughs> <laughs> i like that terminology too yeah functional, functional cuteness, cuteness. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah like if you spend like 10 minutes in my stream I'm saying everything's cute. Like the most weird things. Oh my God, you guys are so cute. And like my community's name is Cuties of Chaos. I love it. Yep. <laughs> Everything has I'm, to be cute. I, I, am, I am seeing a couple. Uh, one where well, there was Kapap, Strafus, Mr. Oh. Whiskers. Oh. I got, that's all Trooper. Poor Trooper. <laughs> I love this one. Name it Percy. Like Percy, but just Per. <laughs> that I think I like Percy slash like Per that. for short, but I like yeah. Mr. Whiskers too. I like all those. I want to name the cat all those. <laughs> <laughs> Every run, run I do, the cat will be named a different name. That's there what I do. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> that scene always it makes my heart melt. Just the expression on the cat's face. Yes, and then this next little part, I'm like, ugh. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yup, it doesn't matter how many times you see it. It's like, ugh, sucks. Like, why? It's so sad. Poor kitty. Mm-hmm. Oh, and then the sound he's making. Yeah. Poor baby. Mm -hmm. It was so it's funny when when the game came out, you know, I was watching other people stream it. And this was like the first thing I saw was the cat falling and then that. And I was like, geez, what kind of game is this going to be? <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of glad they do this at the beginning, though, rather than like halfway through. It still, Even, it still hurts. It still hurts. I feel like they did it to kind of set the tone a little bit, but it something similar happens a little bit later. But it's yeah. not as dramatic. But that's the worst one for sure. I saw someone say Mufasa. Oh, um, I love Mufasa and he's orange. Kind of like Mufasa is. Yeah, and then someone also said pumpkin because Halloween. And again, we have oh. a, this is an orange tabby that we're playing as, correct? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, so that also that also fits. Y'all are so then, creative. Yeah. <laughs> and then this one, if we need a cool cat name, we'll call it uh, Edward Hissy Pants Esquire the Third. 
Wow, I love that. <laughs> I couldn't say the full thing all the time, but I love it. <laughs> See, so now we're in, I think this chapter's called Dead City. See, I don't remember the chapter names, but now we're in chapter two. <laughs> so now we're starting to do some platforming in this chapter, but you know, it's, it's getting you revved up for what you're about to do. I don't know if that was a name someone else just put in the chat name the, for the name of the cat to be. Pss, pss, I love that. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, I'm not sure if they had, they had intended that, but I, I actually, it's, I think that would get the cat's attention. Yep, I think so too. <laughs> <laughs> the cat would always pay attention to you. There you go. I do enjoy how like the game feels open but there are subtle hints that always kind of happen in this where it's subtle directions like on a screen it said follow me mm -hmm. you know, there's a sign pointing upward to tell you what's going on yeah yeah and i feel like that's that's seen in this chapter and then a little bit later on but i like that too because i'm weird sometimes i like really linear games like mafia but sometimes i like free free roam worlds like gta or something so i like the mix that this game does it lets you explore but it also lets you know where you need to go next here comes my first really good job with like cat emotions as well yeah yeah i did it better than uh lion king the movie <laughs> the 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 new movie not the original yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm still so upset about that, man. I could rant about that all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think they had like four or five cats that they mo-capped. They motion cap cats? Or maybe not mo- uh-oh, uh-oh. Maybe they didn't motion cap them, but they had like reference material. Because there were like cats in the, um, in the credits and stuff. Oh, that's that's awesome. I love mm -hmm. that. <laughs> also, I saw in chat earlier, someone said that you can skip touching the robot from earlier. Skip touching the robot, the one that makes you jump? Yes, yeah. They, they, they said, wait, you can skip that? Oh, talking to him. Yep, you can skip that. Even though I like talking to him, but you know, when you speed run, you got to go. Yeah. So homie yeah. has to wait. <laughs> yeah this game has a lot of oh goodness don't do that this game has a lot of nice skips in it yeah i'm looking forward to seeing that that was actually a question in chat that just popped up too about skips yeah it said are there gonna be a lot of skips in this um i'm trying to think a lot i would say like a moderate amount but you do skip a whole chapter in oh, the really? next chapter yeah and i was oh my gosh you have no idea how happy i was when i saw the chapter we skipped because i hate that chapter <laughs> <laughs> so we skip a whole chapter and you know we skip some small things throughout the run but i would say that chapter skip is the biggest skip in the run that I can remember of right now. The thing that's also really neat is this, like the atmosphere in terms of like the sound effects, the music, the, every, just the environment in general to kind of give you a nice sense of what's really going to be happening here. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, this... I would say this is like my top three games in regards to that. Like it just brings the ambiance to where it needs to be. And it does a really nice job. Like the music in this game is just so, it's so unique and it fits the game perfectly.
And then you really get to see the environment kind of flourish in uh, the next chapter. Slums. I love slums. I remember the first time I played this, I was like, oh, I can move the cat around and just put random stuff in there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like a normal cat. <laughs> like a normal cat. <laughs> just spend hours on end just throwing everything off. Yep. Just like a cat. That, that's like a what cat. I really like about this game. Like, you can, like, speed run it if you want, but you can also, like, take your time with it and find all the places where you can, like, scratch and, like, meet, like, the robot people and stuff. Like, you can really be a cat in this if you want to. So how hard when you first play this for the puzzles? Because I know this game has a lot of puzzles in it. I would say... I'm trying to remember. I know I had to look up one puzzle because I just could not... Uh, excuse me, sir. Okay, there we go. I could not figure it out. I was just like, I don't know what to do. And the solution was so simple. I was like, you know what? I don't have time for this. But... um. <laughs> But I tend to, like, struggle with puzzles and video games because I'm an overthinker and I'm, like, super analytical. So I'll be looking at it from, like, this, this level that does not need to be happening. So then I struggle. But then once I figure it out, I'm like, oh, my God, I'm so excited. I, thought I figured it out. So I would say they're moderately difficult for me. But I feel like most people find them, like, easy to moderate. There's nothing too hard in this. Do you but find I like the games that challenge me. Oh, say it again? Oh, yeah. Do you find the puzzles now for speedrunning, do you find them to be a little bit more complicated because of the open world atmosphere? Or is it just a, you know exactly where to go, so it's just kind of almost linear in that aspect? I would say it's almost linear because I know where to go to at least finish like any percent. Um, there are some puzzles I don't have to do because... um. I'm not doing like a hundred percent or something. So if I had to do those, I would definitely still like struggle with it. But now that I know what to do, like it feels linear, but like not in the like, oh, I have to do this again. It's like still fun to do it, you know? And I do enjoy like at, when you first put that on, the cat's like, oh, this is really heavy. And then after a while, it gets used to it. Mm-hmm. Like they... I feel like they just found the details that cats do just very well. Like the small little things that cats do. I feel like they capture it really nicely. Yeah. <laughs> Cat spinning. <laughs> you gotta do it. I feel like it just gives me good luck, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna ask if it did anything to the game, but I think it just got no. the answer. <laughs> I mean, hey, maybe it does. Maybe the designers are like, hmm, we'll give them, you know, better RNG if they do this here. There you go. It's <laughs> awesome, Jack Connors. <laughs> Always gonna do the spin. Nope, didn't do the spin there. Oh, no. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I failed. I gotta reset. <laughs> see, so this chapter, in my opinion, is the first chapter where you really see like how expansive the game is. Cause like this little city is pretty big like i spent like hours just exploring going around talking to everybody but now in the speed run you spend a good chunk in here because the way the chapters go is the slums rooftops and then the slums part two 
but you skip out on the chapter rooftop. So this is where I'm gonna do the skip where you don't have to do rooftops. I'm excited to show that because man, it took me a minute to learn this whole like sequence of things you have to do. So I'm always excited when I get to do it. That's the one thing that I really like about speedrunning is just when you get to that particular point and it's mm -hmm. you work and you work and you work and then when you get it, it's just yes. Yep. Exactly. Like I feel like speedrunning can. Hold on, let me talk to this man real fast. <laughs> but yeah, I feel like with speedrunning, like it, it like helps kind of give you self discipline and like teaches you how to be like patient with yourself because. Some strats in some games are going to take you a hot minute to learn if you ever learn it at all. And it's like, all right, do I want to learn this? I need to take the time to do it. Or I'm not learning this because it's taking too long. And I've done that a lot in this game. So I was like, nope, it's not for me. It's too hard. <laughs> <laughs> but then it's all still fun. Like, I never want to be stressed out when I'm speed running. You'll be stressed out a little, but not to the point where now I hate the game. I never want to hate the game from speed running. Yeah, that's a, that's for me and my speed runs as well. Mm-hmm. Because all the time I'll hear like speedrunners that take it super duper seriously, which, you know, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But I hear them all the time say, I hate this game now. Like, I, I actually hate playing this game. And I'm like, oh, that breaks my heart to hear. I made your sidewalk dirty, sir. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that wasn't me. That was this dude's fault. That wasn't my fault. I'm innocent. Well, that's something oh. else that's really interesting about it is that each individual character here definitely has like their own story to tell, their own vibe. You can see mm -hmm. that it's not a mirror image. It's just every single creature is living in this world. Yep. Absolutely. Like the, the cities and the worlds all feel alive. It doesn't feel like it's just emptiness. Look at this box, this defying gravity, like man. <laughs> <laughs> that box listens to too much Wicked the Musical. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and it does it later on. Sometimes it'll do it, and then other times it will fall the first time. And it's like, uh, sir, please. See, this jump, I'd be struggling with it sometimes. Let's see if I get it this time. There we go. Someone did just uh, ask about why the image earlier kind of faced the wall there. Is that is that just from the engine that you're aware of, or is that kind of setting up the skip for later? Uh, which wall? The, when you entered the code. Hmm. And why the picture was like going through the wall? Like, yeah, phasing through. Yeah, I think that's just like clipping like the pictures is clipping like it does it every time Th this game definitely has a lot of like clipping that's not supposed to happen if you will so yeah i was just clipping but i'm always nervous that it's gonna like crash the game or something i don't know why but <laughs> i just feel like it will do it one day <laughs> i feel like that's a speedrunner's mindset and you just like you see the clipping and you're like do i experiment with this mm -hmm. or do i not to make sure i don't like destroy my game yep see and it's weird i'm not the type of person that um i'm not the type of person that tries to tr that tries to find strats i'm the type of person that i'll see other people find them and then i'll try to do it myself <laughs> <laughs> so if i see something like that happening i'm just like ooh. Um, maybe someone else will figure it out because I'm not going to do it and then my whole PS4 is just destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
So I noticed it's just now you hit a save and quit to get back. Is that just to change your location when you come back or is there another strat behind that? You know, th this strat is one of the strats that I have no idea why we do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, oh, they did that there. I guess I need to do it there too. So I'm I'm not sure if exactly what it does, because you see it just put us right back there, you know? So it must reset something in the game that needs to be reset, but I'm not sure what it is. Well, it looked like you almost changed from like night to day for a second there, at least that's what I thought. But with all the all the fluorescent lights that are still on, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, it's... Here, can I see it from here? Yeah, you see the sky up there? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll tell you about that later. Oh. <laughs> mm. Well, the game will tell you about it later. I might not even <laughs> have to say anything. Nice face. Yeah, I love that jump. It's so funny. When I was learning to jump to get into his house and want to get out, I perfected the one to get into his house like pretty quickly and I struggle with the one to get out of his house. But now I struggle to get into his house, but I'm fine with getting out. It, it's so weird. I don't understand. If that's speedrun culture. Mm-hmm. Yep. See, and now I quit completely out of the game. <laughs> I remember when I saw that, I was like, what are they doing? I was so concerned. I was like, why would you do something like that? But that is basically how you skip um, rooftops. So I've completely skipped the whole chapter by doing all of that, which is fun. Because rooftops so just, is hard. <laughs> yeah, so just because of that, and just the way the because you insert, I guess because you insert that, um, you phase in that the game thinks you're supposed to be there, and that's why you quit and go, go past it pretty much. Yeah, because I can't remember because I haven't like played the game through in so long. I don't remember where that point where you give Seamus the tracker happens at, but I guess it must happen somewhere in the slums part two. So when you reset it. It's just like, oh, we'll reset you to the point where you actually start this chapter at. So yeah, the game thinks you're supposed to... The game thinks you already started part two, even though you technically haven't. I mean, oh, spinning again. Yup. <laughs> Gotta spin. <laughs> I had to spin that time. Because <laughs> I don't think... I'm trying to remember. I don't... They, oh no, we do go into the bucket at least one more time. So I have another chance. This one just just angry about all the paint. Mm -hmm. Which makes sense. <laughs> oh yeah, I couldn't imagine having to clean up paint. Especially off of concrete or whatever this flooring material is. Yeah. And it's right outside your store or mm -hmm. house or whatever. Yep. I love this dude. Uh, his name's Momo. I love his, like, I don't know if that would be an overcoat or a trench coat, whatever it is. I love it. it yeah, it's got a really cool design to it. Mm -hmm. It's like almost like a Hawaiian shirt, but longer. Yeah, it's like an overcoat. Like, I've never seen something like that in real life with that pretty design. Someone's going to cosplay that at some point. Yup, and I'm going to be very excited when I see it. Because <laughs> <laughs> I feel like only a few people will know what it is. I'm like, yes, I'm one of the people that understands. <laughs> so is it explained in the in this game or in the speed or anything why the creatures are the way they are like i know you're a cat and then we have these robotic humanoids is it explain why there's there's a, this i guess why this is happening aside from the fact that we're trying to get back to our other kitty friends or family yeah 
I know, um, cause I played the game casually once and then immediately started learning the speed run. And that was right when it came out. So some parts of the story are a little foggy to me, but what I can remember is that like the robots will be like, I forget what they said, like our soft cousins, so, like talking about humans and how like they left the city a long time ago. So now the robots are left here. Okay, yeah. But I can't remember exactly. Because I'm telling myself that I really need to replay this casually and like try to like find all the memories, find find all the things I didn't find my first playthrough. So I can like remember the story. Because I love this game, but I just can't remember the story. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that happens, especially when you speed run something for a long time. You just forget certain parts, and then you like you have to go back. Right, let me go back and casually do the one hundred percent so that mm -hmm. I understand the entire story. Yep. Oh yeah, and this game. I remember when this game came out? It came out in the summer, so it's still not that old at this point. See, I mean, look at the box. I mean, look at that. That is physically impossible. <laughs> I'm seeing Chad also helping me with the lore. Good. See, I'm glad they, they know what's happening because I, I just can't remember. <laughs> I want to remember, but you know... It happens. Always try to phase out before he can open the door. Oh, I did it! <laughs> nice! Nice! <laughs> I think I got so the Someone detergent. in chat pointed out that the cat's name apparently is actually called Murto. Hmm, how's Named that spelled? M A U R T A U G H. Murto. Hmm found uh i guess named after the actual stray cat that was belonging to the co-founders oh i like that name Murto. it fits this cat it does huh that's also but that's also an awesome tribute imagine being like a stray cat <laughs> you find owners and they say i'm gonna make a game based off of you yup <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh that cat is living the best life right now right shoot Oh my god, it was funny. Um, after I was playing this game for a little while, you know, I was looking at the cat and I was like, wait a minute. Because I was, this is like a plug, but I think this is so cool. So I like sharing it when I can, when I feel brave enough. But um, I was on GlitchCon in 2020 and chat voted oh, wow. for um, my emote glitch cat to be like a global emote. So that's an emote now. So when I look at Glitch Cat and I look at this cat, I'm like, oh, they, they modeled their cat after Glitch Cat, obviously, because, you know, Glitch Cat is an orange cat, but I doubt that happened. But I like to pretend. <laughs> <laughs> I was like pretending. Yeah. So are we just kind of doing odds and ends quests to help the, um, I believe I saw in chat, Zerks kind of help us get to there or? Um, so what we did in slums, cause slums is based, like the slum section is about to be over. So in slums, we needed to, we basically needed to get Seamus, this character, the tracker that he has in his hand. So in order to do that, we needed to trade detergent with the dude um, and he, he wanted detergent in order to give us some like electrical wires and we need electrical wires to give to the grandma to make a poncho. And the reason we needed a poncho is to give to Elliot so he could repair the tracker cause he's shivering and he's cold. I don't know how a robot is cold, but you know, it's his business. So then we fixed the tracker and we brought <laughs> it to Seamus in order for him to track where his father is because... I forget what Doc is doing. Doc is like a scientist. So he's like 
he has like experiments to get to outside. And you know, that's kind of the point of the game is trying to get outside again. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's why I love how each individual robot or Zerk has their own personality. Like, that's, mm -hmm. are we, I know we kind of touched on that earlier, but it's really interesting that everyone has different names and they, you know, have developed some sort of artificial intelligence. Oh, that one likes the cat. I know, I love doing that. Like, I miss <laughs> doing that in the speed run because obviously you want to go fast, but I was like, I can sneak it in right here, so I'm going to do it every time. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. Yeah. But yeah, the Zerks are the little creatures that bite onto the cat, and then the robots, I don't think they have a specific name. Like, for, like, their kind, so I just call them the robots. The robot homies. Okay. And your main enemy are called Zerks in this game. Mm hmm Yeah, and they're, like, the squishy, one-eyed dudes that are scary. We're about to see a lot of Zerks in this chapter. <laughs> yeah, we've seen them at the beginning here a little bit. Mm -hmm. so at the beginning of the game a little bit. And then there's another enemy type that we see in a couple chapters. And they're actually worse than the Zerks, if you can believe that. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, there they are. Are you able to ever attack them? Mm, well, maybe. <laughs> I'll say maybe for now, you know. <laughs> but as I am right now, no, I cannot attack them. Yeah. I can just shake them off by meowing. I feel like that's what cats try to do here. They, they just shake it off by meowing. <laughs> but hey, anytime I'm forced to. Taylor Swift fans? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that her um her new album was I forgot what it said, like the fastest selling Spotify, like something about Spotify and being number one in something now. Oh, and I was wow. like, ooh, okay, I see you. And I don't even care for Taylor Swift or her music, but I was like, yes, you better work. That's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Respect the game. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah, you got to give people their props, <laughs> even if you don't like them. It's like, yeah, all right, exactly. I see you. <laughs> yeah. See, so that's like the second time the cat kind of gets injured, but it's not as like major and sad as the beginning of the game, which is good. Oh no, yeah. don't go back down, boo. You gotta go up. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That was something else that I realized, like we were talking earlier, that this is such an open-ended game while also being somewhat linear. It's such a mm -hmm. weird and unique perspective. It is, because I'm trying to think of another game that I've played that's like that, and I can't really think of anything off the top of my head. I mean, the closest thing would be, like, the original trilogy of God of War, but that is still pretty linear. Yeah, yeah. Also, I, I, I see you, chat. The cat is okay. <laughs> yeah, he's up and chilling. He's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I have a train friend passing my house right now. So that's good. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, they're wishing me good luck because they blew their horn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let's go. Always got to try to spin stuff to a positive, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Someone in, someone in 
you know, like in the trains watching this and like, oh, I'm going to go past Monkey. You know, for good luck. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so cool. Oh my gosh, I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> And there's been a lot of uh, way to go, or, you know, you got this. Glad to, glad to see you here. You're going to, you know, you're going to run this Thanks, y'all. Y'all are so sweet. I appreciate y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. See, I, I need the good luck right here because this part, struggle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Doc, work with me, work with me. Uh oh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Doc, help me, help me. Help me, help me. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, we made it. It's fine. Everything's fine. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> yeah, that part is. That part took me a while to learn, like, the best path to take and, like, the little things I need to do to kind of increase my chances of not dying there. Yeah. <laughs> Cause the Zerks to this day still scare me. So, <laughs> and, I, and I love how the robots at the beginning are very timid and afraid, but almost instantly recognize what's going on with the cat, and they're like, "Yeah, like the all of us are going to help you." Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, I think they realize that, like, oh, this is a friend. Like, we don't recognize what you are exactly, but. You're being nice to us. Because I think that the only small thing that they're used to seeing are the Zerks. And the Zerks can eat through, like, plastic and metal. So the Zerks will destroy a robot. So I think that's why they're timid around us at first. I'm not sure. Well, and, and with that, it also kind of helps. Because if the robots are trying also to get out and get into daylight, then the cat can help as well. Mm-hmm. Yep, because the cat, even though the cat is affected by the Zerks, I think it's not as severely as robots, which is good. Yeah. So we can all help each other out. People in chat are saying this is definitely Doc from uh, Back to the Future. Yep, because at one point when you're talking to him, he says something about 1.21 gigawatts. And when he said that, I was like, <laughs> oh, my God, because I love like Doc Brown from Back to the Future. So I was like, OK, I love this game so much now. Thank you, game. <laughs> On top of the fact that you get to play as a cat, which, yep. <laughs> I mean, it's an instant sell right there. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> This is another very sketchy part, at least for me. Gotta save Doc. Come on, homie, you got this. Yeah, but this is that weapon that you were asking me about earlier about uh, yes, if you can attack yes. the Zerks. Yep, this is it. Ooh, don't jump on me, please. Yeah, this little section, like when I first casually played the game, I died a solid 25 times here, like easily. So then when I was learning what you should do, I died probably 50 times there. But now now I can do it to the point of where I don't die. It might take long, but I don't die anymore. So that's good. And then we have more like really creative music. Yeah, like I think my favorite music might be in Midtown. And that comes in like a couple of chapters. Yeah, the music is just like plain old unique, which I love that because, you know, you can always put licensed music in a game, which is fine, but it's nice hearing like originally made music. Yeah, it really helps the overall tone. Mm-hmm. Because you can curate the music to your game more than if you're just taking like 
you know, a song from the radio. It might match, but it's going to be probably not as matchy. Yeah. It took me a couple playthroughs to realize that that's supposed to be Marty McFly. And I was like, oh my God, because the vest. Aww, I didn't realize. Yeah. <laughs> that's, so, that's so sweet. Mm -hmm. I love that. And it's just instinct to pet the cat, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> His sweater looks so comfortable. I always say it to myself when I pat him. I'm like, I need that sweater in my life, sir. Please yeah, give it to yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> this next chapter, struggle. Like, like, it's so funny, like, dead end, the chapter we're just in, and then this chapter, it's like a little bit of struggle, and then huge struggle, and then, ah, and then semi-struggle, huge struggle, and then, ah, again. It's funny. Oh, I have so many speedruns where it's like that, where it's just, like, so, like, you get a really stressful section, and then, mm -hmm. oh, nice, relaxing, and then stressful again, and then, nice, relaxing. Yup. I think the designers do that on purpose. Yeah. Not specifically for speedrunners, but, you know, just in general with their tone of the game. I was, I'm sure some may do it specifically for speedrunners. Yeah, because I remember, because this game is still so new, like, I remember in the update, like, notes or whatever for this game, like, they mentioned something about speedrunning, and I think they said something like, we're trying not to patch any things that, like, maybe speedrunners are, like, you know utilizing and i was like that's pretty cool because a lot of game designers would just patch it and not care yeah so it's nice to be in that kind of era where speedrunners are like you know you'll see games where it's like oh no here's the speedrunning mode and it's mm -hmm. some of the stuff so they can have this mode for this and then they can fix it for other um i think ratchet and clank was one of them as well mm-hmm Because, I mean, if you think about it from a... Hold on, this part's sketchy. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> sketchy, sketchy, sketchy. Don't bite me. No, no, no. Be nice. Be nice. I'm your friend. No, I'm not. Just kidding. Okay. But, um... Oh, man, I forgot what I was going to say. What was I about to say? Um... Yeah, I forgot. The Zerks distracted me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh. Well, I know you said around this time was, a, you know, and was a good time for a break. So just whenever you're ready for that, you don't have to do it now. Just whenever you are ready. Um. Yeah, we can do it now. Now I'll be good. Okay, just give a three, two, one, pause. The three, two, one, pause. There we go. All right. We're going to take this moment, chat, to go off and uh, take a small break. This is a great opportunity to get up, stretch, you know, use the restroom, grab a blanket to be nice and snuggly for what's coming up here. Uh, anything else along those lines. So a great opportunity to do, to do that. And again, do not forget that your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channel help support games done quick, both with Hotfix and with Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 cost. So please consider subscribing if you enjoy the daily GDQ content. Once again, we'll be right back with more Stray.
and welcome back to Legally Cute, a show about cute and cozy speedruns. Couple announcements before we continue on into more Stray. Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online will be held January 8th through the 15th. Head to gamesdonequick.com for more information. Game submissions are closed, but the second submission period for games released after September 1st will be coming up on November 6th through the 12th. See gamesdonequick.com for more details. And do not forget, we have a couple horror-themed nights coming up in a couple of days. Fright for Towels is a one-day event on October 23rd to celebrate spooky season with dark, scary, or horror-themed speedruns from the Frame for Towels community. Use exclamation mark Fright in Twitch chat to see the schedule. And of course, on October 31st, we have a Halloween spooktacular hosted by Ekdysis and Smooth Operative. But away from the spooky things for right now, let's go back to some cute things with Stray and Nikki, who is doing a phenomenal job guiding our cat along. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to do my count. Oh, thank you for that, by the way. But I'm going to yes. do my countdown to continue. So three, two, one, go. So I did have a question, like, considering how the cute is, do you own any pets of your own by chance? No, I considered getting a cat, but then I was like, I really like sleeping and I like having a clean house. <laughs> so I was like, never mind. <laughs> that's, I think that's the most unique reasoning for not owning a cat I've ever heard. <laughs> Because people be like, I can't sleep in anymore. And I'm like, oh, no, I can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta sleep. But maybe one day I'll get one. One day. But not right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in that boat myself. Not with the not sleeping, but one day I'll get a cat. One day mm -hmm. I'll get a pet. Yep. I did have a hamster, I think, last year. Yeah, had a hamster last year, but sadly she passed away like a couple months oh, after I got no. her. I was oh, like, ma'am. I do have an emote of her, though. It's like the Pikachu, like, I forget the meme, but the meme where Pikachu's just looking like. So I drew, I drew my hamster like that meme. Oh. Yup, I had to do it. Oh. I like the question that just popped up in chat. Did I miss the part where in the kitty goes meow? <laughs> nope. Look, I'm meowing for you right now. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. <laughs> Ooh, this next part. Sketchy. Sketch, sketch, sketch. <laughs> Is it just difficult to maneuver, or is it... Oh, because I'm about to die. That's why it's sketchy. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, but look at oh. the checkpoint. Look how excellent the checkpoint oh. is right here. It's, it's, it's excellent. I was like, whoever designed this knew what was up. So, yeah, th <laughs> this section is just... Uh, yeah. That was just an intended death, right? Yeah, I don't purpose. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that checkpoint placement is perfection because none of the Zerks are aggroed. So you can just go through like nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. Now, in terms of that with the damage, does internally, do you know if the like cat has designated hit points? Or is some other way to calculate the damage that is being taken for Cat and the Zerk? Um, with the Zerks, they'll like blow up a little, like they'll like expand when you're using this device. When you're spraying them with the purple light, they'll start expanding and then ex eventually they explode when they're dying. For the cat's damage though, the screen will like start turning red. And then depending on how red the screen is, is how damage the cat is but i'm not sure like how many hit points it takes you know what i mean yeah yeah oh 
Ooh, not again, not again. No, 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 no. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. You see how they just gather? Oh, oh I don't like this. That's Zerks. frustrating. Yeah. <laughs> but again, the checkpoint. It's just they knew intended. What's up. It's, it's, all, it's all intended to the run. Exactly. I'm just trying yeah. to show y'all how good the checkpoints are in this game so you're more likely to play it. There you go. See? See? Yeah. See, look at this. No one is aggro, so everyone's happy. Look, no one is aggro. L look how nice and peaceful that is, man. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> See, look at that. Nobody touched me. Easy. There you go. Boom. But I will say, when you're trying to learn something and the checkpoints are that good, you have to reset the whole chapter to get back to practicing that like section oh. or whatever. And you only have that one time, because then if you die, it brings you back to the good checkpoint. But so for speed running and learning, it's not great. But for casual play, it's awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. First try. Yeah, I agree with chat. First try. Yep. Always the first try. Yeah. Every time. <laughs> Ugh, so creepy. Like, why do the Zerks look like that? <laughs> Just Someone why? in chat earlier said it looked like uh, creatures from Half-Life 2. I think they were called Headhunters. I'm surprisingly That's... not a, a Half-Life aficionado, so I don't fully remember the name. See, and I've seen a lot of people say that, and I've never played Half-Life 2 either, so I can't confirm, but a lot of people have said it, so I guess it's true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that y'all are correct because I don't know. <laughs> oh, head crabs, that's it, Eric. Oh, what a terrible name. But I mean, these things look like they could be called head crab. So it probably would look like something that's called a head crab. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's true. That purple light that is there. Someone else said that the um, drugs are affected by UV light. And that's probably what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I know they're affected by UV light. So I assume that's one in the thing. What's in the... Uh the little thing yeah. that unfortunately is broken now because B12 was trying to save us. So it like, it broke the whole thing. So we don't even have the UV light anymore. Oh no. Mm -hmm. but, but kudos for B12 being like, I, I'm going to save the cat. Yep. Because he didn't have to do that. He would have been like, all right, bet. Bye. And yeah. left us in there. <laughs> <laughs> See, and then this is like the most peaceful, pretty, calm chapter in the whole game. And it's it's nice to have that after Dead End and Sewers. Because those are two tough, dreary uh, uh, chapters. Also, kudos to the artwork of this game. It is, is gorgeous. Yes, I really want to see... Um, concept art because i love looking at like concept art of video games i want to see it for this game so bad i don't know if it's available anywhere i was so excited when i learned that little skip that i just did i was like oh my god look at me saving like 13 seconds yes and 13 seconds is a lot of time in speed running Yes. Oh, yeah. I just love the detail of the voice acting of the cat. Like, I know that they sound weird, but mm. also, it, like, it, it, it really does well because it's the emotion of the, just all the different expressions that the cat does with the language is really kind of captivating mm -hmm. to give you an idea of what the emotion of the cat is. 
Yeah. Yeah, I like the random, like, forced meows the games will do. Like, me not even having to press circle. The cat will just, like, meow or make some type of noise. I'm like, I love this. Like, thank you for that. And then if you just want to sit down there and just constantly meow, you just constantly hit the circle. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always scared the game is going to crash here because it lags so bad. I'm just waiting for the day, man. <laughs> I'm waiting. <laughs> so I noticed you're also doing on PS4 Unrestricted. Is there a difference between like, um, is there a reason for it outside of the fact maybe you don't have a PS5 or, you know, anything else along those lines? But more so, what is the difference between any percent and any percent unrestricted? So for me, the reason why I'm doing it on PS4 is because I don't have a PS5 and I really don't like playing games on my laptop because, you know, it's a laptop. So stream streaming off the same laptop you're playing a game off of, I've never liked doing that. So yeah, I, I totally get that. Mm -hmm. And then I also have a... Uh, what do they call it now? PS Plus Premium. So the game was for free because of that. So I was like, heck yeah, I'm going to get this. So, <laughs> <laughs> so that's why I play on PS4. Now, regards to the difference between unrestricted and then I forget what the other category is called. Glitch? Glitch? Glitchless. Yeah, glitchless. So like, you remember how I was saying how we skipped a whole chapter and stuff like that? Yes, correct. So, yeah. so they would not be able to do that in any percent. They'd have to play through the rooftops, um, through the rooftops chapter. And then I'm not sure if they can do things that like the the skip where I face through the door. I'm not sure. I guess that is considered a glitch. So anything that's considered a glitch, they can't do in that run. Okay. Mm hmm. And it's funny because at least when I was like running it and like putting my times on a board, like PS4 is technically like the worst console you can run this game on because the load times are so long and the game crashes or wants to crash so often. So when I saw that, I was like, Lord, but I was like, you know what? I don't care. I want to speed run just for fun. And it's funny because my end, like my end end goal with speedrunning this game was to get sub 125 and then I'd be like done speedrunning it. And I ended up getting like a 122 and I got, um, I had world record for like four days. I was very pleased with myself. Oh, nice. <laughs> yes, it's very <laughs> exciting. Cause you know, I'm not the type of person to, like put my times on the board. Cause like I said, I'm a casual speedrunner, So I don't really like go for like the best times. So when that happened, I was like, absolutely. I'm putting this on the board. I don't care if I only have for like 30 minutes. I had world record at one point. I have to trip you up. Sorry, sir. You shouldn't have been walking there. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I get bad karma when I trip him, but it's too irresistible not to do it. That's some music there. <laughs> mm -hmm. I love that little sound <laughs> cue. It's so good. Yeah. <laughs> I love how the cop's head is a um a, one of those security cameras. I don't know if you caught it. Let me see if I can get him again. You see him? His head's oh, yeah. like a security cam. <laughs> yeah. It's just so fun. See, like this robot is sweating because he he was. He was in that bar drinking on the job asleep and now he's sweating and nervous. <laughs> so it's so it's those little details that just make the game so much fun. Yeah, that's 
I love how each character, like we were saying earlier, just is uniquely their own, which is mm -hmm. really cool for video gaming. Yeah. And it's nice that you still get to see that even during the speed run and kind of get to appreciate it. Because normally you yeah. would miss a lot of that stuff if you're speed running a game. Well, you see all this now. Just wait until you like casually play this. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. This game and is so still... casual. And I st still love you get so much... Um traditional stuff that you, you would see normally in a cat in the speedrun, like you throw things over, you jumped in, you know, you jump in the box, mm -hmm. you get the meow. Yeah, so it's like, in a way, the game, even if you want to go through the game and not act like a cat, the game still kind of makes you act like a cat yeah. if you want to finish the game, which is, it, that is cool. I never, I never noticed that, but I do like that. <laughs> <laughs> So here are the We're sentinels. Still up all that paint. Yup. Everybody's cleaning in this game. Like, oh, am I trying to do all that? Yeah, these robot dudes are the sentinels. So they are like the worst because they will one shot kill you in this. Oh gosh. Yeah, not a good vibe at all. No, especially <laughs> for the cat. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And it's so sad when they get you. It's like sad when they get you. At least with the Zerks, yeah. it's well, the Zerks is sad, but like I don't know. It's just so violent with the Sentinels. Well, let's hope we don't see that. Yeah, we might see it in what chapter is this? Midtown. We might see it in the next one, but you know it will be all right because we'll still get through it. Because again, the checkpoints are bomb. So it'll be okay, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, please go away, Mr. Sentinel. Thank you. I love how the loading screen is also a little cat face. It's just adorable. I know. When I first saw that, I was like, are you joking? I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so much cuteness. Yes. I'm legally cute. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> This is a puzzle that I was telling you about earlier that I had to look up because I just could not, for the life of me, figure it out. And you see how easy it is? It's like, really, man? <laughs> <laughs> Those are always the more entertaining puzzles that you just spend so long. Like, I, how do I complete this? And then you watch like a YouTube video or a guide and it's you just read it and you're like, oh. It's the mm -hmm. obvious answer that I just didn't think about because I didn't think it was going to be the obvious answer. Yep, exactly. Because like I said, <laughs> I'm an overthinker and it's like, oh, oh, you have to do this and that. Nope, none of that. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, we spin in the bottle for good luck. Yep, we had to do it because I think, let me think. I think that's the last time we're in a bucket in the game, if I'm remembering correctly. So I had to do it there for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, it's always a good day when you can skip past both of the Sentinels. Ooh, the wow, second one yeah. doesn't matter quite as much, but I always feel better when I do pass him without him seeing me. close uh oh please don't come over here Ugh. i hope he didn't see me if if this if that sentinel over there sees you it's not good so hopefully he didn't see me i don't think he did but we'll we're gonna find out, find out. Mm -hmm, exactly we'll find out <laughs> yeah <laughs> Oh, 
Lava lamp. I want a lava. I've wanted a lava lamp since I was like in middle school. It's I love bad. How a lava lamp is a heart. Is a heart too. Yes. Again, with the cuteness. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me. Also, I want to ask. Can you knock the lava lamp over? You know, I feel like because it's necessary for that level or for that puzzle, maybe not, but I've never tried. So maybe you can. Yeah, maybe you can. After you yeah. finish the puzzle, just mm -hmm. knock it off. Yeah. And more, thing, more things the robots have to clean up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Poor things. Oh my gosh. <laughs> See, so here, at least on PS4, I'm not sure about PS5, honestly. But on PS4, you have to restart to checkpoint once you get into the nightclub. Because if you don't, the game will crash while you're in the nightclub. Oh, mm -hmm. interesting. Yeah, because one time I was on a really good run and I wasn't aware of that. And I never had the game crash before in here. And I had the game crash so hard and I was like, oh, my good run is gone. So I make oh, sure I reset yeah. every time I get up in here. Because <laughs> I can't handle that. <laughs> no more game crashes. Yes. <laughs> At least where we know it's going to happen. Right. Yes. I like these dudes because they remind me of uh, Daft Punk, right? The Daft Punk. Yeah, Daft the mask. Punk, yeah. Mm hmm That's probably the inspiration for this entire area. Oh, yeah. I think even the kind the, of the music. The lone, robot, the lone robot just dancing over there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> some of these robots have some really nice dance moves. I was like, ooh, did somebody mocap you? Like, you're doing great. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. But there's one robot, like that one down there. You can barely see them because the lights are like flashing and stuff, but. Uh oh, am I lost? Where am I supposed to go? Hold on. <laughs> uh oh, did I bring down the wrong things? I think I brought down. Wait, hold on, 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 hold on. We got this. Hold on, hold on. There we go. <laughs> so I was like, oh no, I know I did the right thing. Shoot. It happens. It happens. Yep. <laughs> Here to have a good time. So. Yup. Oh yeah, no no world record attempt, which I'm fine with, cause <laughs> cause after I lost the world record after four days and I saw the time, I was like, nope, I'm not even gonna try. <laughs> <laughs> so no attempts for me. One day I might do a PB attempt, cause my PB I can definitely approve upon, but not the world record. Yeah, it's a really nice time. And speedrunning isn't always about the world record. It's about just having fun and playing the game fast and just working mm -hmm. on your craft. Yep. And for me, it's about me beating the personal goals that I set for myself, yeah. mm -hmm. which tend to not... The only way it will be influenced by someone else is I'll look at the average of other people's time to be like, okay, so XYZ time is possible. Let me make my time somewhere around there. But it's never a, oh, I have to beat so-and-so. Nah, I, mm, mm Nope, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> Great for other people. Like, I, I love seeing people who really want to get, like, world record and really, like, you know, like, be first place in their category. But it's yeah. just not for me. I think since I've been on Twitch, I've seen... I want to say two world records, like live, like the person was streaming and I actually saw them get it. And it is like the coolest thing ever. Like I still remember to look on their faces, just so happy and proud of themselves. And I'm like, yes, boo, you better work. I love it. And then I, yeah, when I get my world records, I do that. And then I, and I see someone else get another world record. I'm like, yes. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it's all about supporting people, even if they just beat your time. Like Exactly. Yeah. Yep. We all support and care for each other. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then it gives you like either a goal or be like, hey, I'm good on it. I'll try to beat my PB, but I ain't trying to beat yours. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love how the key just like shoot up to her hand. <laughs> <laughs> she has magical powers. Magnets. Mm hmm. It's yeah, I guess because she's a robot. She, yeah, she probably yeah, does have yeah. magnets. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, we lost our... I didn't notice it until just now. Oh, we lost uh, B12. Yeah, yeah. We mm -hmm. lost the, all of that. Yep, because when we got captured into the jail... The game will show you in a second, but... We're in jail right now. So, they put Clementine, this robot, in a jail cell. Us in a jail cell. And then B12 is in that little box. Super duper protected. Kind oh, of in no. his own cell. I know. Oh, poor BD12. When I saw that, I was like, absolutely not. I'm getting my homie and no one's going to stop me. Yeah. And I really like this section with the cat and Clementine because it's like the cat needs B12 to translate what the robot is saying. But like here, you kind of see the cat and Clementine communicating with each other, knowing that hey, I want to get my friend B12. And Clementine's like, bet, we're getting B12. Even though they can't understand exactly what each other is saying. So I like that. Yeah. This next section, mad hard. <laughs> <laughs> Mad, 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 mad hard. But hey, we're gonna try. Let's see what happens. It's actually not that hard. It's just, I don't know. It's weird. I struggle with it. It makes me nervous when I do it. Let me take my time. No need to rush. Can I jump up there without hitting that? Let me try. Don't hit it, please. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, am I stuck? I think I'm stuck behind the thing. Because normally you can run up to B12 during that little cutscene and like skip having to uh, run past the Sentinels. But I got stuff on a little corner, so that did not happen, but that's okay. Ooh, I should have waited. Ooh, don't get me. Don't get me. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Woo. We made it safe. Barely. Yeah, barely got out of that. Nice. Yeah, I was like, oh boy, I should have waited longer. <laughs> <laughs> but we made it. Because like I said, I'd rather do a section slowly rather than try to be fast, die, and now have to restart the whole thing. Oh, yeah. So. You're showcasing, you're showcasing the run. Mm -hmm. Okay to do that. Yep. But that's the thing, like when I was first learning this game or like, you know, like my first runs, I would always just want to be fast, fast, fast. And it's like, no, sometimes you will save time in the long run if you just stop, pause, and then keep going instead of rushing and dying. 
like how someone in chat just had a whole little thing and it was just meow, 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 meow. Just talking as a cat in chat. <laughs> Hey, maybe it's a cat's cousin. We, you never know. Oh, yeah, you never know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be funny. <laughs> oh, Lordy, this part. This first one's fine, but the second set of Sentinels? Mm -mm. No, sir. Watch me say that in this first one. Get me now that I said that. Uh oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> when I got stuck, too. <laughs> I know he's showing back there now. Every time I come through this section, it reminds me of the, um, the show Prison Break. I haven't watched that show in yeah. years now. I need to go back and I, I don't think I finished the series actually. It's good. It's a really nice series. Ugh. Oh, I forgot to close the door. Oh, I did perfectly too. All right, let me let me be careful. I have to be quiet. Shh. No. Oh no. Uh oh. <laughs> uh oh. oh no. I don't know where the other one is. Oh, he's right there. I don't want to meow at him. All right, I know what I'll do. I'll just reset it. See? We'll just reset yeah, it. <laughs> All right, sir, see so there me? There actually is, there is a reasoning for the meow, not just because, you know, they wanted a button to meow. There's actually a mechanic for it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like here with the Sentinels, what you can do if you want to get their attention is you can go near them, like not within their little, um, like, you know, the little blue thing, like their search, I guess, area. And if you meow, they'll hear it and then they'll turn towards you. And then with the Zerks, um, when they jump on you, you have to spam the meow button to get them off of you. So Meow definitely is functional in this game, which is nice. I like that. I also prefer, I also enjoy the, like, we just added a Meow button because we wanted the cat to Meow a lot. Yep. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't know if it's all the cutscenes, but I know in some cutscenes you can Meow during the cutscene. Like right now I'm meowing. That's great. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, yeah. When I saw that, I was like, yes, absolutely. Another win for this game. <laughs> <laughs> this game has so many wins. Yeah, I, and I mean, honestly, the, the only, I would say, issues I have with the game are how often I feel like it wants to crash, even though it doesn't. That's really my main issue. Or like before I knew like about the nightclub thing about having to reset. But like in regards to just the game itself, please don't get me, please don't get me, please don't get me. Okay, good. But in regards to the mm. game, like there aren't a lot of like game breaking bugs or anything. Like it's pretty well made for an indie game and just for a video game in general. Yeah. So. Now I'm curious what the, what the uh, sequel's gonna be. What the what? If they're gonna make a sequel, Stray 2. I don't really, the way it ends, it, it feels like it could be open to a sequel, in my opinion, at least. Like, they could make a sequel, they could make a prequel, they could do either one, from what I as, see. Spin off as a dog, spin off as a bird. Yeah. They could do spinoffs, and I would love, like, I definitely want to see more games from this uh, studio, yeah. 100%. Same, same. And I'd prefer it be an animal that you're playing as, but I wouldn't, it wouldn't bother me if it wasn't an animal. It's just a really uni unique take on 
a platformer as well as other kind of subtleties. Yeah, and like the story of the game is pretty deep too. And like, you know, if you're playing as a cat, you wouldn't expect that offhand. But if you really like pay attention to the story and like what they're trying to say, it's like, whoa, like this is really a nice deep game. Yeah. So. All because they just found a stray cat. <laughs> yep. It, it's wild the things that will inspire you to do certain yeah. things. It is wild. But hey, thank God for that cat because now we get to do this, you know? <laughs> yeah. Just always now, remember that no matter what, the simplest thing that out of something simple out of nowhere could be something that could just completely change everything. Yep. Absolutely. It's like the butterfly effect, right? Or whatever. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah. Every time I think of the butterfly effect, I think of the game Until Dawn. Oh, great game. I really need to. I think I've only played through it once. I really need to play through it again. I adore I that game. Think, I don't think I finished it. I know I played it. I don't think I finished it. One of those one of those games where I play it for a little bit, and then another game comes out, and so I played that one, and then I forget the other game exists. And... Yep. <laughs> Skyrim is that game for me. I'll be like, oh my god, Skyrim for like two weeks, and then I don't play it for like a year. <laughs> and then it comes up in another console and you're like, oh my God, it's got room. Yep. <laughs> Literally, because I first bought it on my PS3, I want to say. And then I don't I don't like my PS3. So then <laughs> I'm mainly on my PS4 now. So I'm like, oh, if I get on my PS4, I'll play it more. Same thing happened. I played it for two weeks and I was like, oh, yeah. you know, this is cool. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> now you can play it on a, on a fridge. Yeah. <laughs> Apparently, or I won't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows nowadays, you know? <laughs> I did actually get to see one of those like super fancy fridges in real life like last year. I was like, wow, this is so like magical to me right now. But I was like, it's too expensive to have like for me. So I enjoyed looking at it. Yay. It's so funny playing this right now because normally like if I was doing like a run to like try to get a pb this is the part where i'm like so like nervous hearts raising hands are sweaty because this is like the last little section of the oh. run mm -hmm. so it's weird not being like super nervous <laughs> about it <laughs> i'm well, not used so. to that yeah it's, it's... that is good it's a it's a nice change I'm the one who has this, who I, when I watch my splits, when I, when I speed run and when I get to that good time and I get to that one moment, I'm like, like, I have to mentally always like, don't freak out. Don't freak yes. out. Don't freak out. And then I freak out. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. You know, it's funny when I'm speed running, I don't use splits. I just have the timer just go. Like I start it and I stop it once the game is done. And I think it's mainly because I play on console, so I just don't want to be bothered with having to tape my hand off the controller. You know what I mean? Yeah, no. Yeah. I have some games that are like that. Mm -hmm. Where it's just timer only, no splits, none of that. Yep. It, it just depends on the game and depends on the speedrunner. Yep. Yeah, because I feel like for me, splits make it too serious for me. And I'm like, now I'm like super stressed out, like playing the games. Like, oh. nope. If I just have, because if I just have like a timer, 
then I only really check it during certain specific times. I'm like, okay, I'm a little bit behind right now or oh, I'm ahead right now. I'm not like constantly looking at it. So that's actually, that's actually a very good point as well. Mm -hmm. Because with certain, when you have those splits open, you sit down and you're like, oh, I'm behind four seconds or I'm on a good pace right now or something like that. And so that can help or hurt the anxiety. That's actually a yeah. very good point. Oh yeah, that's why I was like, nope, I, I need to help myself as much as possible when I'm speed running. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I want no more additional stress. I, I, that cat has some very sharp claws to be able to rip through electrical wire like that. Yeah, and be fine. Just be like, oh, you know, whatever. Yeah. I, I didn't do yeah. anything just now. <laughs> Do not want to mess with this cat. Mm -mm. And I guess in order to, to get for it, we had to turn on all the monitors and we had to go through that. Yeah, we had to turn on all the monitors in the center part of the room. And then we had to like hack into the system of the computers on the outskirts and I don't know exactly what B12 is doing right here, but he's doing something that helps, so <laughs> I can't so, remember. So, so the kitty's a hacker as well? Yeah, with the help of B12. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Yup. Oh no. Yup. Uh, when I was playing this for the first time, I was like, oh my god. And then I speed ran it for like, you know, a period of like a month and a half. And then I watched someone else get to this part like casually. I was like, oh, 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 oh why? Because <laughs> it's funny because speed running, you're like, okay, this cut scene needs to go so I can like run to the door and I can finish the run. You're not thinking about the emotions, but when you're watching someone else play it for the first time, like you remember like, oh, this is a sad moment right now. Yeah. It's weird. Chat has all, chats have uh, all the very, very sad emojis. Oh, Aww. I agree, everyone. It's a sad moment. But look, look, happiness has happened. The Zerks were getting exploded. The homies get to see the sunlight. So it's sad, but happy at the same time. It's a roller coaster of emotions. Mutual <laughs> sacrifice. Yup, sacrifice himself. I don't know why the sentinels die with the sunlight. That I don't quite understand. The zerks I get, but not the sentinels, because they're robots, based, essentially. I wonder if it's something like they're being run off of neon lights or some sort of energy that the sun just depletes the energy of. Maybe that would make sense, because they would have to be ran off of something that needs no some at least natural light so that would right. make sense i'm kind of surprised that after that whole scene there wasn't a robot who dropped paint <laughs> hey may i you know i don't know if they uh pan over the dude whose paint we dropped originally and if he was still cleaning it or if he looked up and he was like oh the sun <laughs> i gotta pay attention next time <laughs> <laughs> and we are done gg thank you congrats that was a great run thank you yeah it was pretty good like i died wearing sewers which <laughs> of course <laughs> yeah yeah and still under estimate yep <laughs> yeah, I had fun with it. it. It was a very comfortable, cozy run, and that's what yeah. we wanted today. So that's exactly it's what Bigly Cute is. So, if anyone wanted to, uh, if they saw this run and they were interested in, like, ooh, I kind of want to run stray. I want to be, I want to pretend to be a cat for an hour and a half. Where <laughs> would they go to learn more information about the run? Um, I would go on speedrun.com or. On my YouTube, I have a um, I have a whole guide on how to speedrun this game. So, 
Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to go to my YouTube. My YouTube's Nikki Games 11. Ooh. But yeah, I'd go on speedrun.com. They have really nice, uh, helpful forums. Um, I feel like people are still uh, streaming it on Twitch. So yeah, those would be some good places to start off at, I would say. Awesome. And if anyone wanted to follow you, I know we had, I've, I've seen the shout outs in chat, but if anyone wanted to follow you, where would they go? So you can go to Nikki Games 11 on Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, pretty much everything. It's Nikki Games 11. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, uh, do you have any uh, any shout outs you'd like to give out? Um, any like thank yous or anything else along those lines? Um, I got to shout out my community, Cuties of Chaos, my peoples. Uh, um, and I would say I want to shout out the whole Stray speedrun community because I was in the Discord. I never said anything, but because of the tips and stuff that they had in there that I saw, it's like, that's how I was able to get world record. And that's what made me kind of appreciate the game more. And I also want to shout out the creators of this game because the game is fun. So yeah, those are my shout outs. And my family, of course, but they're not watching this probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nikki, thank you so much for showcasing Stray. That was an amazing speedrun to watch. Thank you for having me. I had fun. It was a beautiful time. I had a nice time speaking with you. And yeah, I love playing Thanks. Stray. So it's a win-win for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Well, do not forget, Twitch chat, that we are not done. We have one more run of the evening of you, of a uh, Yuppie or Yuppie Psycho coming up here in just a little bit. We're going to take a small break to get everything set up for that. But do not forget that if you're watching this on YouTube, hello, YouTube, be sure to press the like button on this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, head on over to twitch.tv slash games done quick if you're interested in looking at our live content starting weeknights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. Like I said, we're going to take a small break. We'll be right back with our next run. Stay tuned. Hello, and welcome back to Legally Cute, a show showcasing all nice and cute and cozy speedruns. We're going to get things straight up with Yuppie Psycho here in just a moment. But first, a couple announcements. Do not forget that Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online will be January 8th through the 15th. Head to gamesdonequick.com for more information. Now, the game submissions have closed, but the second submissions... The second submission period for the games released after September 1st will be coming up on November 6th through the 12th. Visit gamesonquick.com for more details. And do not forget that Fright Fatales, a one-day event on October 23rd, only a couple of days from now, is going to be celebrate spooky season with dark, scary, or horror-themed speedruns from the Frame Fatales community. Use exclamation mark Fright in Twitch chat to see the schedule. Do not forget also with all things horror and spooky on October 31st, Halloween night, we're going to have a Halloween spooktacular hosted by Ecdysis Win Smooth Operative. And finally, your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheer on the GDQ Twitch channel help support games done quick, both with Hotfix and with Awesome Games Done Quick 2023 online costs. So please consider subscribing if you enjoy the daily GDQ content. And now I can send things over to Bath and Jan and Nicole for Yuppie Psycho. And I was told beforehand it is pronounced Yuppie Psycho. How are you all doing today? Great. Thank you so much. Really good. Thank you. Good. I'm excited for this run. Me too, Same Nicole. here. Yeah, it's a great <laughs> run. <laughs> are we all set? Yeah. Whenever you're ready. Awesome. Thank you so much. Well, welcome, GDQ friends and chat friends. My name is Bath and Jan, and I'll be running for you today, Yuppie Psycho. Uh, this is the glitchless any percent category that I'll be running for you today. Um, with me commentating is my good friend, Nicole. Good night, Nicole. Hello, I am Nicole Goodnight, and I am a huge, huge fan of horror, as well as the style of games. So I am very, very excited to be here tonight with Bath and Jan. 
Yeah, same here. Uh, this run is very exciting. Uh, as Nicole mentioned, uh, this art style is phenomenal. Uh, we love the um, indie dev team, Baroque Decay. Um, very, very cool stuff for you in store today to see. And I have crashed. Uh, so I'll get this again, oh, sort no. of back up here again. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know... <laughs> this game, this game, it's okay. We'll start it back up here in just a second for you. Hopefully that'll clear up any memory issues and we'll get started again. So no problem at all. All right. You just let me know when you can run. see the game. <laughs> you know, it's a good run when it's already crashed. Yes. yes. <laughs> no problem. All righty. Are we all set? All, you can see the game and everything? I don't have it yet. Okay. Just let me know and uh, I'll go ahead and click in here and hopefully you can see it. If you need me Re-share to restream it. To it Discord. Yeah. There are no problem. Uh, hopefully that's uh, all set up for you again here. Good to go. Good to go on my end. Awesome. Excellent. Okay, so getting that out of the way, um, this game always throws me for a loop. Uh, you never really know what's going to happen. So we're going to go ahead and get started with a new game here. Just as a reminder to GDQ, we're not going to start the timer until the first input. So I'll count you down here in just a second. But for first, we're going to head into new game and we're going to get um, that squared away. We're also going to be kip- skipping all of the cutscenes. unfortunately. Um, the cutscenes are so delightful. They're pixel rotoscoping, sort of this anime style. It's very, very fun. But unfortunately, we do have to skip them. So we're going to go ahead and do that here. And then we're coming up on our first input shortly. I'll count you down in just a second here. All right, coming in through the door here. And that'll be three, two, one, go. Nicole, do you want to explain a little bit about the backstory and our protagonist here? Absolutely. In this game, our protagonist is Brian Pasternak. He is a recent college graduate who's gotten kind of a mysterious letter inviting him to take a quite lucrative job at a big company called Centricorp. The offer seems to be worth a lot of money, so he takes it without even knowing what the job entails. Um, standard standard workflow, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, and as a bit of a background, society in this game is divided up into classes alphabetically. So A class is higher than anything below it. So A is always the highest, B is higher than C, et cetera, et cetera. Now within Centricorp, your rank is reflected by what floor you work on. So floor 10 is where the CEO works, and floor 2 is the lowest floor. Floor 1 is the canteen, and floor 0 is the lobby. Now we talked to this blonde gentleman Chapman in the lobby, and he kind of yells at us. He's quite rude because he thinks that we're beneath him. But if you look right here, you see that he's actually getting off on the second floor, which is the lowest ranking floor, while we Mm -hmm. know that we're going to be working on floor 5 and our friend Kate on 4. So really, who's laughing in the end? We are because he's He's a peon, essentially. Uh, so we see mm-hmm. Kate go into the elevator. We will see her go up to floor four. And uh, we've just hopefully made a new friend for the rest of the run. Yeah, absolutely. So we're going to see Kate off here onto the fourth floor, as Nicole mentioned. Uh, and then we're going to see here uh, that we're going to have uh, come up here to the security camera and show uh, the job offer letter to the security camera to see if he'll let us onto the elevator. Um, we'll think that uh, maybe a plank, perha- a prank perhaps has been played on us, but instead uh, the elevator doors will mysteriously open and we'll get on with the run here. It'll open up into a uh, introductory segment, um, which is sort of like a title sequence. Um, gives us a bit of a break as runners as well, a little bit of a, uh, a tea break. Can I sit my tea here? Very nice. Good to go. Um, yeah, it's good. Good tea break. Um, so this this little title sequence is great. Uh, it's there's a lot of references in this game to like uh, pop culture, uh, different movies, uh, and and also other horror genres as well. Other games in the horror genre. And so uh, we'll see this here with this title sequence coming down here. Pretty pretty cool stuff. Love to see it. So that's all good to go. Uh, oh. Other than that, uh, yeah, other other than that, nothing to really worry about, honestly. Yeah, I wouldn't really Um, worry too much about this. I mean, you'll see some jam, but that's standard office protocol. Right, absolutely. Yeah, I know for me that jam is a totally normal um, happenstance in the workplace. And so we're going to come up on floor 10 here and uh, get right along. You'll see some jam on the floor as well as perhaps on the wall. I encourage you really not to worry about it. Everything is totally fine. Uh, We're going to not really read this contract, just sort of skim through it and sign it because uh, who really has time to read all that stuff anyway? Uh, So we are going to sign our work contract here. Um, Maybe some mysterious little, yeah, just don't worry about it. It's everything is fine. Uh, Nothing really to see here. And so, uh, We're going to uh, make our way back down to the elevator, uh, trying to avoid stepping in the jam here on the floor, trying to get on, try not to get it on our shoes or anything like that. Uh, We're going to head to floor five, which is our sort of um, hub floor of this run. It's the office that we work in. And so uh, we'll be we'll be returning here at different points in the run um, in order to uh, accomplish uh, different tasks in the game. So we'll see here on the floor. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to ask, does any of that jam go into the elevator at all? 
I wouldn't say so. I think so, elevator's but, a jam-free um, zone, right? Yeah, it is. For the most part, it is a jam-free zone, uh, fortunately, because it'll, it, you know, it might get rather sticky in there. So uh, there are designated jam areas throughout the run that you'll see. Um, it keeps it quite compartmentalized. Um, Nicole, do you want to explain a little bit about the uh, witch paper as well as the saving mechanic in this game? Absolutely. So the saving mechanic requires two items in order to do it, the witch paper as well as ink. Uh, we both have to make sure that any item we get in this run we are rationing carefully because every single thing you get from the paper to pencils to water, you have a only a limited amount and you need to make sure that you have enough for what you need to do. So we're going to be using a witch paper to save and then we need to save more for some uh, instances later as well. And that is what that is used for. Exactly. And yeah, exactly as Nicole mentioned, um, saving as well as uh, healing items in this game, uh, we'll be using at certain stations uh, throughout the run uh, to uh, typically in the run, we don't save at all. We actually only save once and it's a scripted segment. So that's unfortunate because I really love saving in this game. It's a great, it's a brilliant mechanic. Um, so uh, we're going to be demonstrating how the healing items kind of work here by grabbing some water and then some coffee powder in the corner of the office. Hugo has directed us to make a cup of coffee as our first office task. Um, we're going to grab some uh, coffee powder out of the trash can. I assure you it's totally fine and uh, sanitary, not at all anything to worry about there. Um, and then we're going to go up to the um, coffee machine and then brew a coffee. So that's kind of how the items work, is you would bring uh, typically water plus another item that needs to be prepared to a certain station uh, without throughout the run. And then that's how you prepare food for them to like heal yourself in the run. Um, Hugo's going to demonstrate a rather unorthodox way to save or perhaps to make a photocopy of anything. Um, so there is that. He will also invite us to put our face where his behind uh, just sat. And so kind of we get this idea of Hugo's personality. He's kind of a trickster, kind of a prankster guy, not really a high regard for others in that sense, but not a problem. So uh, we're also seeing here with this uh, co copier that we need uh, an ink cartridge as well as a piece of witch paper. And so we'll get our first and last save, unfortunately, in the game. Great smush Brian face there. And so uh, that's it. That's the first save come and gone. So is what it is. Uh, but yeah, if you play this game casually, uh, you'll get a lot of that. You'll get a lot of saving um, as you ration out your ink cartridges and your witch papers as you play this game. Uh, I did not mean to do that. There you go. Just plug in this cord here and we're off to the races. Alrighty, so we're gonna um, turn on this computer here and we'll see that we need an ID card. Uh, we'll let Hugo know of that fact and he's gonna go notify the boss who is then gonna give us a phone call who will then direct us uh, to um, Office D. Alrighty, and so then we'll go around the corner on floor five to Office D and we'll grab our ID card and we'll be on our way. So that's the first um, intro segment of this uh, of this run done and uh, dealt with, so that's good. We're gonna make our way around here to floor, on, on floor five to Office D. Uh, and so we're just gonna move this aside and head in here. Uh, a little bit of jam on the floor. Maybe the lights are off, not really working. Um, it's probably fine. Maybe someone hasn't been in here for a, a little while. Um, totally nothing to worry about. Um, as well, uh, you might see some office supplies or appliances fly around here. I'm um, sure you it's nothing to worry about, really nothing to see here. Um, nothing to be concerned with at this point in the run. Perfect. Uh, this gentleman is uh, strapped rather securely to his chair, and so we don't really worry too much about his safety here. He is. Um, he appears to be quite secure, as evidenced by our attempts to, un uh, to untie him. Uh, so we're going to go up here and grab this cardboard box. We're also going to come to the left here and grab another cardboard box. I am going to be listening for a audio cue and then uh, grabbing the second audio, or sorry, the second cardboard box here, which will then trigger this segment up here and then we can go uh, to the upper part of Office D, no problem at all. All right, getting this gentleman up here, um, grabbing some safety coffee powder along the way, um, as we will be doing periodically throughout the run, we'll be grabbing certain items. Um, as well, I will be rationing items depending on how how the run is going. Uh, this run is quite flexible that way, so it's very, very nice uh, that as runners we have that sort of flexibility. There's a little bit of jam on the wall as well as um, some people practicing perhaps some aerial yoga, um, some hanging yoga. I encourage you really not to worry about it. They all have their health and safety in mind, and so um, we really applaud them for their efforts. Uh, they look to be quite uh, relaxed and stress-free, so there's really, it seems like there's nothing to really worry about here. 
Um, we are going to borrow some uh, coffee powder from this gentleman here and make our way over to the left, uh, and, as well as the last cardboard box. Um, to the left here is our good friend, uh, what my community has called uh, Wally the Wonk. Um, he's a very nice gentleman. Uh, he does want a hug from us at this point. Uh, unfortunately, that's not something that we want at the moment. So instead, he's going to escort us out of Office D um, back from whence we came. Uh, it's a bit, you know, maze-like in there. So he's gracefully showed us the way out, and we're very grateful for that. Um, and so really nothing to worry about. We're going to calmly uh, make our way to the vent over here and uh, stack these boxes uh, with which when, then we will use the vent to traverse back in a very normal and orderly fashion back to our office. So very, very typical normal office day stuff. Really nothing to worry about so far. Pretty, pretty usual, pretty, um, pretty stress free. Seems um, like a traditional Monday for me, honestly. Yeah, exactly. Honestly, yeah, this just... is exactly what happens at my job, too. So Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So nothing nothing, nothing to really worry about at this point. Uh, the run's going quite smoothly. So there is that. All righty. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and head back into our office, into the boss's little corner room here. Um, and so it turns out when we walk into the boss's office that uh, Hugo is sitting here. And Hugo actually lets us know that there are no bosses at Centricorp, which is um, honestly really good news because that means no one's around to uh, give you orders or tell you what to do. Um, you can pretty much just have free reign. And he says, isn't that wonderful? And we said, hey, um, there's like some weird, maybe a little bit strange stuff going on. I don't really know. And he says, that's rather silly and I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, and then he'll sort of leave us to it. And so we're going to kind of take his word for it uh, for right now. And we're going to go ahead and collect our ID card and kind of be on our way and not really think about that too much. Um, we're going to uh, enter our ID card in the computer here. Unfortunately, we do have to skip this really great cutscene. Uh, it's really good, um, but we'll just have to, um, in the interest of time, uh, skip right over that. We're going to be entering into this sort of 90s uh, vaporwave-esque area. Uh, every time we use the computer, we kind of come into this area, which is pretty cool to look at. Um, here on our right is our AI robot friend, uh, Sintra, who's going to be um, introducing some exposition, some plot, as well as um, some extra stuff, sort of letting us know what exactly is going on around here. So she's kind of going to explain what's going on. And she uh, lets us know, hey, you know, you signed that contract earlier without reading it. Uh, so what you've legally agreed to do is... Um, do something it, it's killing the witch you're killing an entity called the witch we say okay well hold on first of all i don't want to kill anyone let alone on my first day on the job that's that's a lot to tackle um second of all the witch is it doesn't seem like that's a that's a real thing so it seems like you're asking me to do something that's rather rather silly um she says no i assure you um that is your job we're offering you a lot of money to do it and uh you signed the contract so now you got to go do it um and we say no don't really don't really know about that and she says, well, why don't you just go grab the hex and hammer and then, you know, we'll kind of figure out the rest. And so we're kind of thinking, OK, maybe we can just grab this book that she needs uh, and then we can sort of talk our way out of it later. We'll see. Um, so, you know, maybe we'll take the money and go. We'll see. Who knows? Uh, so we're going to at least agree to go get the hex and hammer. Um, so we're going we're, we're, we're to go do that for her. Uh, she says, by the way, do not tell anyone that you're the witch hunter. It is a secret. So we think, OK, so that's fine. Uh, we are going to uh, oblige there. And uh, then we are free and clear to head to the seventh floor. So that's, the seventh floor um, is done in two phases. The library part of the segment uh, is done in two phases. The first phase is to get this form from this computer here. And uh, in pure bureaucratic fashion, uh, we have to complete the R-301 form uh, with all fields completed. Uh, and then we have to bring it back to Sintra to approve. Uh, and then at that point, um, we can then enter the library with her blessing. Uh, so we'll be doing that in that order. And then in the library segment, we have uh, another set of puzzles and a boss fight, and then we'll be well on our way. So I'm going to collect some water here ahead of time. I'm also going to be um, looking at these symbols on the wall. I do have to look at them. Um, also, I believe there is a uh, ink cartridge here. Perfect. All righty. And that's good uh, safety uh, backup for us there. I'm going to also be setting up this uh, sort of rolling document segment here uh, for a bit later. So I'm going to do just that. It makes it a little bit easier to route uh, in segments. Alrighty. Nicole, do you want to explain a little bit about the mines coming up here? 
Absolutely. So we have these lovely, lovely things that we are introduced to. They are eye mines. Uh, they're going to turn two different colors. They're going to be green if you get close to them and red if you get even closer. Red, they will explode and they will deal damage to you. We try to avoid them in most cases and in a lot of cases we try to actually leave them up because they can actually light the way. Um, mm -hmm. But there are some that we have to take care of. You do so by stabbing it in the eye with a pencil. And that's just yet another item that you have to be very careful about how you ration out because there are some mines that are in areas that you absolutely need to destroy them. You cannot risk taking the damage from them. So you have to make sure that you've got enough pencils along the way. Absolutely. Yeah. And as Nicole mentioned, it's very important to ration. Uh, pencils are very, very important because you need a certain amount in order to finish the run. So I'll be making sure to keep track of those um, as I do the run. Um, and as well, uh, um, ink cartridges and some witch papers are also necessary in order to complete the run. So uh, as runners, we do keep track of the items uh, in that fashion. I'll also be picking up some safety items here along the way, as well as uh, untying this. I'm sure everything's fine and there's nothing to worry about. Um, just sort of taking care of errands up here and a safety soda as well. So we're gonna grab this uh, ladder on down here and see what's going on. All right. I appreciate the artwork up there. Really it's good artwork. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I Someone often very draw talented. eyes on my wall uh, at work mm -hmm. and they really appreciate it, I find. Yeah, yeah. You're quite talented at that, Nicole, I find. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we see here that this gentleman has taken what we like to call a jam nap. Um, a jam nap is a really important part of uh, workplace culture. Um, I find at times maybe you, during the workday, you may find yourself needing a snack, a pick me up, perhaps maybe a little break from uh, the mundane nature of your work. And so um, sometimes you just got to lay face down in a pile of jam. And you know, it honestly works. Uh, it's it's tried and true. Uh, and so you might find characters from time to time uh, taking a little jam nap here and there. Um, and I assure you it's totally fine, totally okay, and uh, a great a great way to get through your workday, I find. So we're going to use the foil from this cheese sandwich here on this fuse box. Um, and so that repairs the fuse box that we can use the lights upstairs. I don't really recommend doing that in real life. It may not perhaps perhaps be uh, the safest way or the uh, most efficient way to repair a uh, uh, a fuse, but uh, there is that. Okay, so we're only going to be taking out one mine here because uh, we actually need the rest, as Nicole mentioned, to light the way on our way back out here. We are going to be grabbing some pencils and the like up here. And then uh, we have the uh, other portion of our document. Um, so enter in the first instance that we see of um, Super Toad. Now, I don't know about you, Nicole. Personally, I've never seen uh, Super Toad in my life. It doesn't really look familiar to me at all. No. Don't really know what's going on there. But it, it no. appears to me as if um, he might be a character who uh, perhaps wants to do mischievous things, perhaps uh, play a little joke on us, and we don't really appreciate that so far. It's really not very nice of him. But that being said, it's really not an issue to get out of here because these mines do have the lights attached to them, and uh, we'll be routing around them without taking damage here on the way out. Very good. Good to go already. And so we're going to be heading into this um, eye door here, so artfully uh, decorated. Um, I encourage you not to worry about what's going on behind that door. I'm sure it's perfectly fine and nothing to worry about. But there's a very meanly placed eye mine here, but we know about it ahead of time. And so we kind of make a quick work of that. We can put this cassette tape in there. Um, as well, uh, with the eye mines, uh, you, you can still be on the first frame of animation where you're supposed to take damage. But as long as you get that pencil out there pretty quickly, we don't really worry too much about taking damage from the eye mines too much. So it's actually a little bit of a forgiving mechanic there, which is kind of nice, as long as you kind of get it in uh, a good, generous window then you're good. Um, so that comes in handy during the run, definitely. Um, especially with these really meanly placed mines where they're kind of supposed to explode on you and give you a little bit of a scare. Um, with this one, we made quick work of it and it's totally fine. So we can head out here. I'm gonna take a little tea sip. Perfect. And Club Mysterio is a great part of the casual gameplay. I uh, really, really love it. It's a good little club. Alrighty. So we're gonna head out of the archives here and uh, that pretty much sums up this part of the run. So that's all good. That went quite swimmingly. So there is that. Perfect. Let's make our way out of here. Jam location number one. Very good. Just leisurely making our way out of here. Then we're gonna head to the elevator and back down to the uh, fifth floor. Yes, sorry. Is it suffice to say that this game so far is the jam? Oh my goodness! Uh, yeah, you could certainly say that. This. You you can you can certainly say that. Um, yeah, you could certainly make that uh, assumption. Definitely. Uh, I'm incredibly so. jelly that I didn't think of that joke. If you know, if I had my soundboard on, <laughs> I would play you the. <laughs> <laughs> 
there is that. All right, so we met uh, Rostov there for a little bit. Uh, she seemed to be mostly fine. Uh, uh, Sosa does want to talk to us, however. Um, she asks us what our job is, um, and we kind of give her a nonsense answer. We don't really know what to say. So we're sort of like, uh, something. Um, and she says, hey, come over here for a second. She says, uh, do you know about uh, the witch or like the witch hunter? And because Sintra warned us, we're like, uh, I don't, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, I have no idea what you're talking about. And she's like, you know, the, the witch. And we're like, hmm, doesn't really ring a bell for me. Mm, not, not really familiar. Uh, and then Hugo promptly comes in and he says, oh my gosh, you know, Sosa is the office goth and she is always uh, telling stories and lies and making short films with her friend during work hours. And he's like, I don't know if you should believe a word she says. She's, she, she rather loves to tell fibs. And so we're thinking, hmm, okay, well, it seems as though these two are at odds with one another. Um, and we don't really know who to trust at this point, but uh, regardless, we're gonna just set that aside for now and head into the computer and uh, go find Sintra to approve the form for us so that we can enter the library. So we'll do just that. We'll make our way over here. I did see something in chat that said to make sure that we preserve this run for later. Oh boy. <laughs> it's already it's it's GDQ pun hours already. We're already getting started on that. Well, you know, it was bound to happen sooner or later. <laughs> Should have known I walked right into it. Alrighty. So uh we're all good to go there. And we're gonna head out and back to floor seven. Right before that though, I am gonna prepare a couple cups of coffee because it is good for the boss fight coming up. Uh, Nicole, do you wanna explain a little bit about the boss fight coming up? Oh yeah, so the first boss is actually the hardest boss in the game, which is real fun. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's a spider that in order to damage it, you need to lure it over some mines, which means you also need to damage yourself. So not mm -hmm. only are you having to keep track of how many times you've successfully hit the boss, but you have to keep track of your health as well since you are taking damage during it. As well as that, he doesn't always travel the same path every time, so it really just depends on how you route it based on what he's doing. So he's mm -hmm. very, very difficult. Uh, a, lot, a lot goes into managing him, but... You know, you'll see him very soon. He's he's quite lovely. Yeah, he is a lovely fellow. All righty. We're going to pick up this a flashlight here. And as Nicole mentioned, uh, yes, the first boss is the most challenging boss I find in this run. Um, he deals a lot of damage rather quickly. Uh, and so we joke that he's like kind of the final boss in the game. Uh, it's where a lot of the runs typically, if, if anything goes wrong, that's usually where something will go wrong. But uh, fortunately for us, we make quick work of him and that's totally fine. But yeah, it, he is quite a, bit, quite a challenge right off the bat. And so uh, we'll be making sure to grab some safety items and making sure that we can make uh, short work of him. So that's all uh, fine and good. This puzzle fortunately is the exact same every single time. So we're just setting things up here for the next segment. No problem at all. Grabbing some books here and putting them in the correct places. Uh, and you know, all good there. Okay, so we have one more book to place. Uh, not too challenging of a puzzle either. They kind of, you know, ramp up as they go. So that's good. And uh, we've seen another employee there taking a little jam nap. She seems to be fine. So not a problem at all. Yeah, she's doing okay. She's doing all right. So that yeah. chime will let us know that the puzzle is done correctly. And so we can proceed on forward. And so these red envelopes uh, on the floor here will actually give us a lot of exposition, uh, which we actually don't really uh, have any need for uh, during this speed run. Um, and so this is a, a great place for this little blurb. Um, so if you're checking out this game right now, if you're looking at the speed run, you're thinking to yourself, man, this looks like an excellent speed run, but I'm getting so much of the game spoiled for me. Uh, rest assured, actually, this run will showcase uh, the bad ending, which is getting fired as soon as possible. And so you're actually missing out on much of the content of the game. So if you think to yourself, man, you know, it sucks that I'm watching this run and it, a lot of it's getting spoiled for me, the, a lot of the gameplay, I assure you that much of what the game has to offer, much of the lore, much of the really crazy stuff that it has to offer for like, especially different endings and end game stuff, uh, you really have not seen much. Um, so if you are, in, if you're interested in picking up this game, please still do so because there's still so much to discover. Um, I am going to listen for an audio cue here. Okay, so it looks like the boss is taking probably bottom root. Yes, that is correct. Um, so what I'll do instead is lure him around here, and then we'll use this mine first and then go around to this, uh, sir? Is he stuck? Sir? Sir, absolutely not. Sir? sir? Oh no. Sir? There he is. All right, he, got, he maybe got a little stuck there. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, we got the we got the first hit, so that's good. All right, he's taking a little bit of an unorthodox pattern here, but that's that is totally fine and okay. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, okay, that's totally fine. We have a cheese sandwich and some drinks here. Not a problem. 
Alrighty, let's see if he takes damage a second time here. Okay, perfect. And a third time. Oh, okay, let me make sure I'm topped off. There you go, perfect. All right, so as you can see, that boss fight can get rather dicey, but we're totally fine, we're good to go. Um, and so this owl gentleman will awaken and that will signify the end of the boss fight there. And uh, we're good to go. So that is the uh, hardest boss in the game. So we're good. We've gotten over <laughs> that hurdle and we're, we're all set. So uh, can breathe easy. Uh, all right. So then we're going to turn off the flashlight to avoid some dialogue out here as well. I'm just going to top off a bit more there so I don't have to worry about it too much. Uh, and then we're going to be heading down to the fifth floor again to talk to Sintra once again, because we have that hex and hammer for her and she will want to take a look at it. So we'll do just that. Perfect. All right. So we're headed back into the computer world here and she is right here. We're going to hand her the book. Uh, and so uh, we're going to try to get out of the uh, agreement by saying, hey, look, Sintra, look, it's been fun, but I really can't do this anymore. Uh, and then she offers us a lot of money. Uh, and then we're like, OK, we'll stay and listen a little bit more. Maybe that's OK. Um, and so she'll analyze the Hex and Hammer and she'll be explaining a little bit more about what's going on, uh, a little bit about the company, as well as uh, this, this, this mysterious witch character, um, as well as perhaps how to deal with the witch character. Fortunately, as speedrunners, um, all that we're interested in is just getting fired as soon as possible. So really, none of this really interests us at this point. Uh, it's more just little tidbits as the text flies by as we mash through. Um, but for the most part, uh, you know, it's, it might be good to know for the future. So uh, there is that. Um, and so we're just talking with Sintra here, going through the um, exposition motions, uh, and then we're introduced to the horse, uh, which is a very vital part of the uh, game story. So uh, there is that. So the horse is very important here. We're going to leave this computer area and get introduced to Dada the horse, who's, uh, again, very important, very important character. His handler and uh, rider, Colonel Dumont, is going to lead us into the meeting room here. We're going to have our very first workday meeting, which is very exciting. There's some stonks in the back wall, so you can see it's very serious business things going on. Uh, and we're just going to have a little chat about um, maybe the workplace ethic as well as, uh, you know, everyone's motto and such, uh, as well as he's going to tell a little bit of a story about the witch, um, which you won't really listen to because he seems like a rather silly fellow. Like maybe he's making, maybe he's embellishing some details. We don't really know. Uh, you know, Hugo may or may not turn off the lights for dramatic effect. Uh, you know, Malone might make a hissing noise. Uh, and so there is that. Um, but yeah, for the most part, he's just sort of like the witch is bad. Don't go near the witch. We're like, OK, whatever. Um, there is also a question and answer segment. Uh, it's like a little quizzing segment uh, coming up here. And uh, uh, it, it, pun intended, it behooves me to answer them correctly. <laughs> it behooves me to answer them correctly. Um, if we don't, we do get some credits to see. see I, can, I can play that game too. Um, so, oh, Jeff, uh, Jeff's been all about it this whole time. <laughs> So uh, if I answer anything incorrectly, it's totally fine. It's just we prefer to hang on to our money if we can, because it gives us a lot of flexibility uh, later on in the run um, for buying some items. So I'm going to try to mash through here and but also not mash through here too quickly. And it looks like uh, we're good to go there. Great. So we get to hang on to all of our money there. It gives us some flexibility for purchasing items in the games, which um, is great for, again, like the run, routing the run accordingly. So that's very good. Very good. Um, all right. So. Uh, meeting is almost over here. Great. Good job. Great meeting led by the horse. You'll see here on the left that Hugo has made employee of the month, presumably every month forever since the dawn of time, or at least anyone's been working at the company. Um, that fact may or may not come in handy later. Uh, who knows? But uh, it is something that we've noticed about Hugo as well. Hugo reminds us that it is his birthday as we say, oh, that's great. Happy birthday. Good for you. Um, and then, you know, we'll make our way into Office B and maybe do a little gossiping um, as a uh, you know, as sometimes happens during the workplace hours, uh, sometimes you do a little gossiping. So uh, I'm going to grab some water from the water cooler and talk to Rostov here, who wants to gossip about our coworkers. Uh, we're also going to grab from her some uh, sleeping pills, which do come in handy later. So we will accept those. Um, never know, we might need a good, uh, a good nap or anything like that. Uh, so there is that. So go ahead and grab those. We're also going to come down here to the item shop, and we're going to grab all of the coffee that Mappy has to offer. Uh, as well as a couple safety pencils, um, because uh, that's always good to have on hand. So we'll grab two of those and we'll head to floor four, because uh, during that meeting that we didn't really listen to, uh, Colonel Dumont did task us with the uh, goal of making a friend. And as you remember, uh, we did make an acquaintance with Kate on the lobby floor when we first came in. So we're going to go and ha ahead and say hi to her uh, on the fourth floor. And so we're going to come around here and have a little chat with her. She seems pretty busy making copies and, this, and the like. She seems to be um, having a good time here on her first day of work. 
Um, so we're going to chat her up for a bit, reintroduce ourselves. She's like, oh, yes, I remember you. You're great. Whatever. Um, and uh, Kate has a very uh, good bit of wisdom, very sage advice for us. Uh, and she says, you know what? If anything ever uh, scares you or makes you anxious uh, during the workday, um, you can simply hide from it. Um, you can head underneath the table. Um, or you can also head into a cabinet, perhaps if your boss is accosting you or maybe a customer. You can always hide from the threat and then it will eventually go away. Um, and we think that's excellent advice. And so we are going to be taking her advice during the speed run, as well as maybe in your corporate day-to-day -day life, you might find that to be useful as well. Um, so, you know, we, we take that to heart, definitely. All righty. Uh, and so uh, Kate introduces us to the marketing department. Um, they're doing a bit of a floor yoga exercise here. Uh, we're going to help out with that. Some of them have escaped their floor yoga uh, designated area. And so how we'll be doing that is uh, how we'll be helping Kate uh, reassemble them is uh, we'll be grabbing these slogans here and we'll be telling them to certain marketing department employees. And uh, if it's what they want to hear, then they'll follow us back and that'll be great. So here's the first one for us. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Excellent work. All right. We unfortunately must collect them one by one. Uh, but other than that, it's uh, pretty smooth once you route it all out, so no problem at all. We're going to deal with these eye mines up here, get them out of the way. No problem. Uh, as well, uh, okay, there you go, perfect. And then we'll be grabbing uh, these eye mines here, and then we'll get those squared away. And then we're also going to be grabbing this combination on the briefcase, or rather, grabbing the prompt for it. And then, uh, I did grab that brochure, I'm pretty sure, okay. So then we're going to grab this uh, combination here on this screen. We'll also be listening uh, quite closely, uh, eavesdropping, you know, right next to these two uh, people. Uh, we'll grab a marketing slogan from them. Uh, and then we'll also uh, head up here and grab this marketing employee with the correct slogan. And so uh, we'll say something to her about having a holiday while you're at work. I don't really know, but you know, it works on her. So she loves to hear that. So we're going to tell her that. Um, as well, we're also going to be, um, oh, she's, she's working away. She's working her way around. Um, we're also going to grab some safety items here for the run uh, because it's a good idea. And uh, first we're going to grab a pizza out of this uh, cabinet here and then a candy bar out of the trash can. And hopefully she's made her way around. Perfect. Excellent. We're going to make our way up here. Uh, Ma'am, I, mm, I don't, that's not the right way. Ma'am, there, there you go. <laughs> she can get a little lost on her way back to the cubicle. Uh, yeah, she's totally having fine. a normal one. It's fine. She is, she is having a totally normal one. You know, she wants to get all of her steps in. Uh, which I, you know, honestly, I agree with. So, uh, you know, can't really fault her for that. So there is that. Perfect. That's I'm actually going to grab a little bit of... You're right, exactly. Um, yeah. I'm also going to grab a little bit of safety water here. Uh, so there is that. Um, there's a gentleman over here having a rather um, unconventional snack. He's chewing on some wires. We'll tell him, uh, please knock it off. Um, we'll also meet uh, the NPC Doshi. He is my favorite NPC. He is uh, the best character in the game, I think. Um, he will give us a rather useful screwdriver as well as the peace sign. And he encourages us to, to just to just chill out, take it easy. And you know, from the IT guy, that's just the best philosophy ever. And so uh, we really like him. Uh, he's really living his best life appropriating and, and taking advantage of uh, the, uh, the computers uh, at the workplace, making sure that he grabs whatever he needs from them to build uh, whatever it is he needs to build in his office. So that's great. Uh, we really, we really love him. So there's that. Uh, we're going to head back around up to this locked briefcase. We now have the combination to, uh, we're going to collect this slogan and we are going to tell this gentleman with zoomies up here. Um, hey, you need to calm down, swallow your anger and pretend, which is great advice, honestly. Um, and so we're going to be doing uh, just that. We're going to be encouraging him to calm down and come over here and follow us to uh, the designated marketing team floor yoga area. Sir, is that he's making his way downtown, walking, mm, crawling slow. But that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but he is uh, homebound, gonna, so. Right, exactly, exactly. Um, and so Kate lets us know, uh, there's, you know, there's another marketing uh, employee who's escaped to HR, so you got to go get him. And we're like, ah, okay, well, that's fine. Honestly, it's okay. So we're going to um, climb uh, safely onto this, uh, you know, um, cabinet. And uh, we assure Kate that we're doing some yoga. It's very good for us, very good for our body and our mind. Uh, so we'll do just that and we'll crawl into this vent here and take the scenic route into the HR department. So no problem at all. No worries. Getting right along here. So it's okay to vent in this game, I assume? Yeah, I would say so. I'd say if it keeps you safe and uh, no one notices, then sure. Yeah. yeah. Nothing's else about <laughs> if that. If it's not sus, it's fine. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. If no one's around to notice how sus it is, then it's, it's probably okay. Um, we are going to be... Uh, Maneuvering around here. Hopefully I don't take too much damage. Looks like I'm good to go. Yeah, mostly good. 
Uh, we're pretty good, yeah. All right, and then we're gonna damage boost around this corner here. No problem. And uh, we'll make short work of that segment. Alrighty. Uh, we're coming up to the most ubiquitous uh, HR experience that I personally had, uh, the giant mouth on the wall. Now, Nicole, I don't know about you, but personally, the giant mouth on the wall is a rather normal part of HR, normal, rather normal part of work culture in general. Yeah, well, I once had a job that didn't have a giant mouth on the wall, and I quit mm -hmm. the next day because I thought that was very strange. Right, and I, you know, I don't really blame you for that because that's rather unusual. And uh, mm -hmm. to me, uh, an, an HR department without a giant mouth on the wall is just a company doomed to fail. Um, and so, you know, we kind of we kind of keep that in mind as we're coming through here. Um, she does have a photograph. Uh, she will encourage us Nickelback style to take a look at it. Um, uh, we'll, we won't be doing that right away. Um, we'll instead collect a couple of slogans here, um, and then uh, in, a, in a particular order. Um, and then we'll be encouraging the HR department, uh, sorry, the uh, uh, marketing department employee to be herself, uh, which is really good advice just in general, just be yourself. Um, so that's good, we'll tell her that and she'll, um, I think she'll appreciate that and we'll set this up for uh, a minute and we'll also grab this safety candy bar as well. I will top off on my healing because why not? There you go. Uh, so we'll tell her to just be herself. Uh, we will also encourage her to just not look away as we put this on her belt. Don't worry about it, everything is fine. Uh, so there is that. So uh, yeah, we're coming back up on the uh, the very normal giant mouth on the wall. And so uh, we're gonna wait for these two to have a little discussion here and then we're gonna um, grab this photograph and head back down and around. And that'll be that. Uh, it's a photo and we're gonna grab it and we're gonna take it with us and that'll be all fine and good. And so Every time I look at it, it makes me laugh. It does it? That's good, I'm glad for that. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah very, very happy to hear that. Uh, Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to be escorting ourselves out of HR now, uh, very leisurely, very calmly. Everything is totally fine. Not a problem. All right. And that concludes the HR section. This employee has been returned to Kate. No problem. And she says, oh, my gosh, thank you so much. We appreciate you doing that. And we say, no problem. What's that between friends? And so uh, we finish that out. Everyone's happy. Everyone's good to go. And so we say, uh, hey, Kate, we have a question for you. We're going to ask her to be our friend. And she says, hey, what's that? Uh, and before we can, you know, effectively ask her to be our de facto friend, um, HR does come out, you know, seeing what's going on on floor four, sort of getting the lay of the land. That does intimidate us a bit. So we're going to hide underneath the table, wait for them to pass. Um, and it works quite well, as you can see. Um, anything in the workplace that gives you a little bit of anxiety or, um, you know, make, maybe makes you a little bit nervous, uh, that's a, definitely a very good tactic, as we see demonstrated here. So um, demonstrably good advice. Um, with that, we will be heading to the elevator. Um, and we'll be sort of uh, navigating our way out here. Good to go. Alrighty. Grabbing that elevator button there. And then we will be heading down to the canteen to prepare some food um, because it is a good idea to prepare it early in the game. Um, because uh, for the final boss fight, it's it, I, I prefer not to be scrambling around at that point. Uh, I, I usually prefer to um, do it a little bit early. So we're gonna prepare some pizza and noodles here. And once again, uh, you do combine um, water along with a food item at a designated station in order to make a food item. So that's, that's how this is going right here. Um, we're gonna make a couple of cups of coffee as well because why not? They're delicious. So we'll do that. Alrighty. Perfect. And then we're going to meet this gentleman over here. Um, he has a present for us, and that's very nice of him. We're going to grab a candy bar from him, as well as this um, cereal box on the table. Very important for later. Um, and we actually don't want to catch up to him too quickly. Otherwise, we uh, open up a dialogue with him, which is a little bit tough to get out of. It takes a little bit of time. So uh, for the sake of uh, the speed run, uh, we won't do that. But uh, he's a rather nice fellow. So there's that. All righty. Um, so we will head back to the computer up here. And we will go talk to Sintra once again. Uh, we'll show her the photograph that we grabbed from the HR department and we'll show it to her and say, hey, Nickelback style, look at this photograph. You know, <laughs> take a look at it, see what you see what you find. Um, and so we'll come up here. She is analyzing the Hexen Hammer currently. Uh, I'm just finding out little details about it. And we'll say, hey, what about this photograph here? And she says, oh, this is the Sintra family. And we think, oh, that's great. Um, she says, so, you know, someone might have spilled something a little bit there, maybe had a little accident, don't worry about it. But um, essentially, yeah, this is the Sintra family. They have founded Sintra Corp, and uh, there's some exposition and plot there. And so we'll think, okay. So uh, we don't really listen to what she's saying, but I'm sure it's all important to the plot. Uh, we're just I sort have of, to uh, Yes. Uh, so I have to ask, when, she, when Sintra looks at the photograph, does it make her laugh? 
It better, appears as if she's honestly. not really laughing. Um, she may not have a laughing protocol installed, and that might be why. Um, but I'm sure maybe at some point she felt mirth looking at it um, in some capacity. So uh, I assure you that even if she doesn't laugh, she's probably, you know, it's m maybe only because she's incapable. So there is that. All right. So we're going to head to the um, eighth floor, which is the uh, Sintra family, um, where the Sintra family cemetery is located. This is just a giant garden in here, which is uh, rather relaxing, uh, rather, rather great. Um, it's like a good place to go on break, um, rather soothing um, nature, get your steps in, that kind of thing. Um, and so there's also just a rather normal cemetery up here. Nothing really to see, um, nothing to be concerned about at all. Especially that, that's definitely nothing to be concerned about. Um, it's very normal, um, very commonplace. And so we encourage you really not to be concerned at this time. Um, and so we're just going to head to the left over here to the next segment. Uh, Nicole, do you want to explain a little bit about the, uh, the fireflies in this segment? Absolutely. So the fireflies are absolutely awful. Uh, they mm -hmm. will gang up on you. They will take your to health and they will follow you relentlessly and try to kill you. However, if you duck into the grass and uh, crawl away from them, they can't see you anymore. So the thing you try to do is get them in certain positions that allow you to complete what you need to do without them going near you. So there's going to be two to the left that Bath is going to bait down to the bottom, get in some grass and then crawl back up so that they can go ahead and deal with these other two boxes free from the hassle of the fireflies. Perfect. So that one uh, did get a little bit behind there, but it should be okay, I think. I don't think he'll aggro too much up here. Yeah, it looks like we're clear of him, so that's good. All right, so we're going to be pushing these boxes through here to this segment. No problem at all. We'll also be grabbing a uh, extra witch paper over here out of this briefcase just for safety concerns uh, because this next segment coming up does... Uh, cost three witch papers and so we want to be sure that we have enough especially an extra in case i you know tend to flub something or whatever it's just really good safety for the run so we're gonna go ahead and grab that um we're also gonna make our way across that gentleman seems to be having a great time and so we'll leave him right to that uh we're gonna sub in the forest goblin now uh by doing that or rather um in doing that we're gonna be throwing uh this witch paper into the fire here and then um answering a series of riddles in the correct order Alrighty, just being really careful not to uh, flub this segment here. Perfect. Alrighty, and that summons the forest goblin. There he is, a uh, perfect little gentleman. Um, it seems that he maybe has some allergies, some pink eye or something. I encourage you not to worry about it. He seems quite happy and fine uh, where he's at, so he's 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 doing a good job. Um, he's telling us some weird cryptic stuff about the witch. We're not really listening to him. Uh, it's not really a big deal. Uh, we are going to offer him the uh, cereal box that we procured earlier, which uh, he will explore with his mouth, uh, which he is uh, completely, you know, free to do. Um, and in exchange for that privilege, uh, he will offer us the poison contract, which costs two witch papers. So we have plenty of witch paper for that now. Uh, and uh, the poison contract allows us to breathe in poison gas without affecting our health, which is great news. So that means we can head back to floor four, where previously um, blocked off segment was. We can go through that segment now, so that's great news. Um, so we'll make our way over there um, shortly, and that'll be all good to go. Perfect. So again, we're going to head back down to floor four after taking a shortcut through the vent to floor five from floor eight. And uh, we're going to proceed with the dot matrix portion of floor four. Um, it seems like they had a group jam nap here, which seems like a lot of fun. Maybe some of them fell asleep. Uh, no problem. I'm sure you he's fine. I just had a little bit too much jam there. No problem at all. Okay, so this upcoming segment, um, it is a bit of a maze portion. You're moving around these cubicles with the help of these switches here. Uh, so we're routing that accord accordingly during our run. As well, there's these uh, gentlemen that are rather unpleasant, so we'll try to be avoiding them. No problem at all. Alrighty. And so I'm going to be crawling over here and then uh, moving these gentlemen into a favorable position. We also take care of that mine there as well rather meanly placed mine. Fortunately, we should have plenty of pencils with which to deal with it. Absolutely, we do. All righty. And then we'll move this gentleman here. No problem. And then that opens up the next segment for us to walk through. I'm going to wait until I grab control. And then uh, we're good to go. It's nice to know those gentlemen love to eat their greens. Yeah, it seems, it seems as if they're very, very... Um, health conscious in that sense. Yeah. Also, that, yeah. that gentleman over there was taking a jam nap. He seems to be sampling several different types of jam. 
Um, so good for him. That's that's really great. Uh, in this segment up here, I do like to take damage to sort of uh, speed boost around here. Um, otherwise, it kind of takes a bit to kind of go back and forth to not aggro them. Uh, I just take the bit of damage and I kind of just go for it. Um, but yeah, some of these NPCs uh, typing at their computers uh, can get aggroed and they can get quite angry at you and lash out. Um, and uh, so that's that's the strategy there with which to avoid that. We'll run right through here and we're good to go. As well, I'm going to be grabbing a safety candy bar up here. Perfect. And we'll hit the switch and we are on our way to the next boss fight. Nicole, do you want to help us out with the uh, next boss fight here? Absolutely. So the next boss fight is Dot Matrix. And basically mm -hmm. what you would do in normal gameplay is you would litter the floor with glow sticks, as you would in a normal office setting when there's a printer with mm -hmm. hands coming after you. And then you would, you know, go from there. However, we don't do that. What we're going to do is talk to Kate and get that to spawn immediately. And then we have to check every single, well, until we get enough of them, spawn for where the buttons can go until we get enough to uh, dispose of the boss. This part is RNG, so you could get it really quickly or you could get it after a while, but the big thing about this boss is that you have to make sure to walk. If you run, the boss is going to be lying to you. So not only do you have to walk, but you also have to listen because if it, you know, if you run, it's going to come to you, but also if you get too close to it, it's also going to come for you. So Bath is constantly listening for the, uh, the boss to make sure that it's nowhere near them. They're picking up one of those buttons and they're going to check every single location until we have enough to get through. Precisely. So we got first button press here for the RNG, which is great news. Good to go. We always really like an early button press. Um, and I'm going to check this one down here. We do have to check. Oh, that's a second button press. Very good. Okay, hopefully that RNG uh, keeps up. It's very favorable for us. Um, unfortunately, I do have to check every single one, do the RNG, but hopefully we get those presses earlier rather than later because uh, as you'll hear, um, the boss kind of gains. Oh, that's a that's three in a row. That's awesome RNG. Excellent work. So what I'm going to do is just going to carefully uh, tiptoe my way around. Um, and it sounds like he's not really within range so far, so we're good to go there. Yeah, I think we're good. And then so what I can do is just actually when I get to this segment, I can just run up. So that's actually a very, very good. That's actually the a perfect dot matrix fight right there. So I'm very, very happy for that. Um, but yeah, GG. in general, that's the way that it, yeah, thank you. But that's just in general, that's the way that it goes. You have to check every single uh, placement of the switch in this edition of the game. Uh, and then uh, you would just hope that you get an early press like that, which is awesome. Uh, very, very happy with that uh, marathon luck there. So there is that. All right, we're going to unfortunately be skipping this cutscene. It's one of my favorites. It's very good. Uh, we're going to be making our way uh, down the sewer drain here. Um, and so we've fallen all the way down to floor two. And uh, it's only two floors, but whatever. Um, and so all that poison gas sort of coalesced in this little like sewage portion here. Uh, and so uh, it's rather yucky. And so we're going to be, uh, we, we've landed on top of dot matrix. And so uh, we're going to be inserting a uh, ink cartridge first. Uh, and then we're going to be uh, inserting the screwdriver, and then we're going to be doing a series of button presses uh, that allow us to uh, head to that ladder there. So we're going to do select, select, print, select. We do a little bit of exposition here, giving us a clue into that puzzle. Going to do print. I encourage you not to worry about that. Uh, everything is fine, uh, no problems there. And then we're going to head out of the ladder and drain the uh, the icky, yucky stuff out of there. Perfect. We're actually, once that's all drained, we're going to head back down into there. Uh, there's an item that we need. Uh, it is the ID card of one uh, individual called Corvo. Corvo is important to the plot for casual gameplay, but fortunately, as speedrunners, you really don't, we really don't care about them. Uh, we, all we need is this ID card. So it's very important that we have this ID card uh, and we will utilize it accordingly. Um, I'll also grab, just for safety's sake, a, uh, a soda over here. So there's that. And then we'll make our way out to uh, floor two. And so uh, on floor two here up on the right, you'll see Chapman running around. Uh, he does want our help. Unfortunately, he was quite rude to us earlier in the lobby, and so we, we, we really won't be helping him. Um, he can just sort of figure it out himself. So there's that. We will rendezvous with Kate, however, in the elevator, um, who's recovering from the boss fight from earlier, breathing in that poison gas. And so we'll take her to floor five lounge, and we'll say, hey, um, some crazy stuff is going on. Really, really dangerous. Um, do you maybe want to, like, leave? Do you want to, like, get out of here? Um, and she's like, no, you know, I, I see what you mean about the crazy stuff, but um, I really want to finish out my first work day. I really want to give it my best shot. So um, I, I don't think I'll leave just yet, but, uh, you know, sorry about that. And so uh, Brian says, oh, okay, well, how about a, a cup of coffee? You want to go get a cup of coffee at some point? She's like, yeah, I would love to. Uh, just not right now. Maybe at the end of the work day or sometime later. Uh, we'll, we'll rain check on that. And so we think, okay, that's great. 
Um, so Dada will come over, and Dada has noticed all of the hard work that we've been doing thus far for the company. He acknowledges our uh, Herculean efforts thus far, and so he will promote us to Employee of the Month, uh, which is quite nice of him. Uh, we really like that. And it seems that he's acknowledged us as uh, you know, a, a contributing employee to the company, and so we really appreciate that. Um, uh, we really, we really like that. So, uh, great, uh, great managerial work by Dada the horse there. Excellent. Uh, and so we'll see Kate off to the elevator. Um, she's going to say, "Yeah, I'm going to stay to the end of my work day. I'm going to give it my best shot." But like, hey, good luck to you. And he's like, oh, "All right." So uh, we'll take that and we'll run with it. There's that. Perfect. Um, and then we'll head to uh, the office E here. And uh, as you can see, Hugo is not happy about the fact that we've made employee of the month over him. Uh, he's rather cross with us. We'll say, I want to talk to you. And he's like, I don't want to talk to you at all. He's going to completely blow us off. He's rather he's rather angry with us right now. Um, and so, it's, you know, it's honestly not really our fault because we're just the better employee. Um, but either way, um, Sosa finds that to be quite uh, quite gleeful and quite, quite mirthful. So he has a little bit of a giggle there. Um, and uh, Sosa will come out of hiding from the cabinet and um, she'll ask us, hey, um, so, she, so she's quite smart, right? And she's put two and two together and she says, hey, I know the, I know you're the witch hunter. And we'll first try to deny it and she'll be like, no, I know for sure you're the witch hunter. And so she kind of figures it out. She puts two and two and so we kind of relent. We say, okay, yeah, you got me. I'm the witch hunter. And she finds that to be rather, um, she's rather proud of herself. Um, she's rather happy about that fact. And she becomes our number one fan and she wants to help us. She becomes an ally. And so uh, we agree to let her help. And that's, that's great. So I have another friend in the workplace. That's very good. It's good news. Uh, before I head into the computer here, I am going to make, I'm not going to make any coffee. Just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, what I am going to do is I'm going to insert Corvo's card in the computer here. I'm going to let Nicole explain what's going on in this segment here. Oh, sure. So in this segment, you're trying to get a certain code. And the, the problem is, though, the person that has the code is faster than you. So if you try mm -hmm. to run up to them, they can teleport away and it's, it's just not great. So the best way to do it is to kind of stay around this central area and hope that she comes close to you and that you can run into her. Um, it's a bell code. It is different every time. So you do have to complete this segment. As you can see, she's, she's quite fast. Ma'am, ma'am, uh, I should not run after her. She's probably going to come around. Ma'am, this, this segment is very, very it, the, the wandering AI, AI path is pure RNG. Um, it is much better to stay in this central location as she wanders around because she tends to come towards you much quicker. Unfortunately, she sometimes doesn't mind her own, we'll see. Um, and as also Nicole mentioned, I think, uh, she will randomly teleport. So you could be chasing her around and then she can teleport to a completely different part of the map. So again, it's not a really good idea to chase her down. It is much better to let her come to you. Unfortunately, you don't really, oh. <sighs> Oh. Every time. Yeah, I know. It's frustrating. Absolutely not. Yeah, she's, she is playing a joke on us, I'm certain. Uh, so we'll just go ahead and get the lay of the land here, try to get her to come down. Uh, sometimes if you just sort of walk towards her, she'll kind of know to come by. But, oh, okay. Ma'am, you want to come over here and let me know what's going on? Uh, also, the, the audio is not entirely... Uh, Sometimes it can kind of throw you for a loop here. You think you know where she's coming from and she's actually not coming from that direction and so you can miss her entirely. So uh, this is the one of the more central parts of the, oh, there's the other NPC there. Okay, we're gonna avoid that because that's a rather lengthy segment. So I'm gonna, try, uh, I'm gonna also, while uh, trying to get Sintra to come here, I'm gonna try not to aggro that other uh, NPC and talk to them because they can sometimes walk in your path. Ma'am? Ma'am? Thank you. 3149, if you could remember that, that'd be great. So that is our bell code. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. I have a, a bit of a, sh I'm not very good at remembering the bell code sometimes. Um, so that is the bell code and we need that for this elevator segment coming up. So that actually, it corresponds to some buttons here. I believe it was 3149. 3149, yep. Perfect. Four and nine. And so that's Corvo's code and that's going to get us into Corvo's little secret uh, passageway in the elevator. It's a little in between elevator floor here. Uh, the ceiling is low, so uh, we'll be crawling along here. Uh, we'll see some jam on the wall. Perfect. There's a rather meanly placed mine here. Not a problem because we do have some pencils to spare. Perfect. We'll be using Corvo's card again to get it into here and then head into his little cubby hole where he has the um, Sintra Family Cemetery key. So you know where that goes. So we'll head back to the eighth floor and uh, utilize that key and then uh, continue on with that segment there. So we're going to pay that cemetery a visit here shortly on the eighth floor. Perfect. All righty. Making our way back up to that uh, cemetery there. 
and you know, nice, relaxing, soothing ambiance. Perfect. Little owl gentleman who's uh, familiar from earlier. Uh, we are going to encourage him to drink this uh, rather gross uh, fountain water here. We're also going to mix it with some sleeping pills. It seems as if he's been having trouble sleep sleeping recently. Um, so we're going to encourage him to uh, maybe take a little nap by uh, sort of uh, ushering him to the left there. And then so we'll stay over here to give him a little privacy as he sips from the water. Perfect. And then he will become sleepy. And that eye is actually not his. He did steal it from someplace. So we will be grabbing that from him and returning it to its rightful owner, which is right up here. Perfect. Excellent. Very good. And we'll be entering this little area here. Um, I encourage you really not to worry about what's going on up here. Uh, we're just sort of taking a peek inside, not really doing anything wrong. Uh, everything is fine. Um, we are going to look at these bells here. Uh, and uh, we're going to think to ourselves, wow, maybe Sintra would want to know about that. So we're going to head... Brian's going to think to himself that he wants to head back to the fifth floor. Um, unfortunately, we're going to get intercepted in the uh, elevator by Rostov, who says, hey, we've been looking everywhere for you. It's time to go plan Hugo's birthday party. And we we'll think, uh, oh, we won't, you, don't, you know, we don't really want to go participate in that because we have stuff to do. We are, we're on this whole quest thing. And she's like, absolutely not. You're coming down with us and you're um, helping out with the party. And that's final. And we think, oh, OK, so she kind of strong, ar strong arms us into this party, planning this party with them. And so here we are. We're on the canteen floor. We're going to go touch base with Sosa here. Um, we are updating Sosa on what's going on, and she's going to help us out with a plan to uh, escape through the elevator. See if we can get away, sneak away from the, the party. I don't know if I can make any coffee. Nope. I'm going to talk with Kate here, uh, check in with her. She's feeling much better. That's good. Uh, she is washing the dishes, and so that's great. We're going to reluctantly talk to Chapman here, who does have his eyes on Miss Malone over there, and we'll tell him, you know what, champ? Go for it. Sounds great. Sounds like a good endeavor for you. Um... And uh, then we're going to talk to Rostov here, and she's going to be blowing up balloons. And once she's all set, we'll grab those from her and we'll put those up for her. Perfect. Uh, I believe this segment fits in very perfectly with the um, horror, horror related, uh, you know, the horrors of uh, the office, corporate office birthday party, um, which can be, uh, you know, quite a harrowing experience. So I think it fits in quite well with the theme of the game, um, you know, rather stressful. Uh, environment here. Um, Sosa is going to think up a plan for us to escape. She's going to have a little bit of a, you know, an attempt here to try to free us. Doesn't really work the first time, but that's okay. She's going to keep thinking, going to keep trying, and we respect that of her. She's uh, iterating on her process, and that's great. Then we're going to place these balloons here, and then we're going to head over to Kate, who is done with the uh, dishes. So grab those from her, and we're going to help set the table here. And fortunately, you don't have to place each one individually. You just got to place them all in a row, which is excellent. There's that. And then she's done with the dishes. We're going to learn some first names here. Uh, fortunately, we already know um, Kate's first name. Our full name is Catherine, which is uh, delightful and lovely. Um, and, uh, you know, this random NPC, we don't really want to know his name, but that's okay. Uh, he did try. There's that. All righty. So we'll grab these plates and we'll line them up. Uh, and Sosa so will take another crack at distracting Rostov. Uh, she mentions the cake, but for unfortunately for us, the cake is already taken care of. Um, so that's not really a valid excuse to get out of here, unfortunately. All so right, there actually is back. cake? Uh, there, may, there might be cake. Maybe. At this point, we don't really know. Um, hmm. But uh, in any case, Sosa is going to be um, attempting to distract Rostov again with another cleverly thought up plan. Um, she's sort of going out of her comfort zone there to help us escape, but we really appreciate it. So we're going to hit the elevator here and try to make our getaway. And so, uh, yeah, we're just going to be waiting for that elevator to come down. Hopefully we can get away. And it turns out that we're going to run into Mr. Spader, who does have the birthday cake. So there is cake. Um, you know, everything's procured and prepared. Uh, and, you know, Mr. Spader says, here you go. And uh, he's going to walk over to the counter and proceed to make a rather dubious uh, looking uh, thing of punch. Uh, it's, you know, a rather weird color and maybe quite alcoholic. Uh, and so there's that. Um, so Mr. Spader is going to encourage uh, Chapman and I to make sandwiches together. Uh, and, uh, you know, maybe not our first choice, but uh, it is what it is. So we're going to grab these pieces of cheese here and this bread while Mr. Spader uh, mixes that very, very dubious looking punch there. Um, and we're going to give the ingredients to Chapman, who proceeds to then burn most of the sandwiches. Um, and, you know, honestly, 
in the age old wisdom where you can scrape off the burn parts and it's still just as fine, uh, we're going to use that and we're going to just set the plates anyway and it'll all be good to go. And so Hugo will now make his grand entrance. We'll do a little surprise here. Surprise. Happy birthday! Surprise! Surprise! So we'll say, hey, Rostov, can we leave? She's like, do whatever you want, kid. I'm eating cake here. Just get out of my hair. And so we think, okay, so this is a good time to go. Uh, enter Doshi, uh, who has the innate ability to make any party into an absolute banger. Uh, just just a, a, a rager. Um, he is a master of his craft. He is a visionary, an icon, um, an artist in his own right. And so we'll let him work his magic here as the party gets started. Um, and he's quite good at what he does. And so we'll let him take it away there. As we gain control of Brian, uh, we're going to go ahead and head over to Kate and uh, check in with her. Say, hey, how are you doing? You having a good time? She's having a little dance there. And uh, we'll tell her, hey, um, we're, we meant to ask you earlier, but we got a little bit interrupted. Um, do you want to be friends? And she's like, oh, of course I'll be your friend, silly. Of course. Not a problem at all. Of course I'll be your friend. And she'll give us um, maybe a dubious little smooch on the cheek there. Probably nothing wrong with that. But uh, Brian will become very flustered and down his punch all in one go, which will make him quite tipsy. Um, and so you'll see the sprite work on uh, Brian here change so that he's drunk. And also you'll see some blurring on the screen, which is quite fun. Fun little effect. Um, we're also going to go over here and talk to Hugo. We're going to say, okay, Hugo, we're going to confront him with some liquid courage. We're going to say, okay, Hugo, three things. A, I don't like you. B, happy birthday. C, um, this whole thing about Super Toad, uh, really not doing it for you, buddy. Everyone knows who you are. Everyone knows who you're up to. You're not fooling anybody. And he goes, I don't know what you're talking about. And we're like, you're not fooling us. And then Rostov, Rostov says, hey, everybody, time for presents. And so that kind of cuts away that tension just a bit as we sort of figure out how to navigate our way out of there. So we're gonna head to the elevator here and Hugo will see that opportunity to say, hey everybody, big announcement. Brian Pasternak is the witch hunter. And we'll all go, oh my gosh, cause it was supposed to be a secret. Um, and so, yeah, so <laughs> Hugo has spilled the beans and we're like, oh geez. Uh, and uh, Hugo says, why don't you show us what you might do if the witch were here. What, you know, as a witch hunter, how would you kill the witch? He says, oh, you gotta cut her head off with a knife. And he says, well, I got a plastic knife for you here. Why don't you just demonstrate? what happens. Just do a little demonstration for us, just a little walkthrough. Um, and you know, we'll be very careful not to harm anybody. Everything will be perfectly fine, not a problem. And the demonstration goes swimmingly and everything's great. Um, and then the party really gets started. Um, everyone starts dancing, doing some cardio, really kicking it off here. Everyone's very excited. Um, we see some people partaking in some jam, which is very great. So again, the party going off without a hitch, nothing to worry about here. Uh, Doji somehow managed to get some jam in his ears. Not really, don't really know how that happened, but he seems rather unconcerned and calm here. So we're really also not gonna worry about it. We're coming up on the last boss fight here. Uh, not a problem at all. And we're gonna grab some batteries from Doshi. And uh, we're gonna stand in front of Doshi with the lights. And this is the last boss fight in the game. This is the child of the witch. This is the easiest boss fight in the game. Uh, we find uh, in many of the hundreds of runs that I've done, maybe once or twice she spawned near enough. That's not near enough, by the way. That's way too far. Um, if she spawns near enough, she will do massive amounts of damage, which we have uh, plenty of items for, so that's totally fine. Uh, but in general, in the hundreds and hundreds of runs I've done in this game, she's maybe done it once or twice. It's very, very rare that she spawns next to us, but with the GDQ luck, of course, again, we did we did a lot for that. But um, essentially, these cocoon things that are coming near me increase the chances of her spawning next to us. But again, in most speedruns, she does not spawn next to us. She does not do any damage to us. We're perfectly fine. We're just sitting here holding the flashlight next to Doshi, and that's all fine and good. And so it goes off without a hitch. And so we're almost done here. Doshi has almost gotten the elevator back to working in working order here. And I assure you, everyone's having a great time at this party, rather lively, uh, people just getting their steps in, that kind of thing. And I saw someone, uh, uh -huh. so I saw someone with jam in their hair, which was really cool. Yeah, um, I'm sure they, you know, went through a lot to, to get that much jam in their hair. And it, it yeah. seems like a good choice, honestly. Yeah. Definitely. And so uh, we're going to head into the elevator here and uh, do what I like to call a little bit of elevator uh, cardio, uh, which is a, also a great way to get your steps in. Um, so we're sort of, you know, just um, getting some activity in here, uh, making good use of this time, uh, sort of priming our energy and our bodies um, for um, the for the workplace environment. So that's that. Uh, notwithstanding those those little, you know, noodles coming out of the floor, I encourage you not to really worry about those. Uh, everything is That's fine. very standard. Yeah. yeah, quite standard for elevator cardio, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, just to kind of encourage you along 
Um, and so nothing to really worry about or see here. Uh, we are going to come in contact with our friend here, uh, who is going to encourage us to grab his hand, and he's going to rescue us uh, from the elevator cardio. And uh, everything will be totally fine and good. Nothing to worry about. Um, and so this this exercise that we're doing here is really good for your shoulders and upper back. So um, very kind of our friend to uh, also give us an opportunity to prime our bodies for um, the stresses of the workplace environment. Perfect. So we're going to um, swing on over here to this ladder and, uh, you know, just really calmly collected, uh, slowly make our way up here. Nothing to really worry about um, at this point. So totally fine. We're going to head into the vent here and uh, catch up with our friend, our gentleman friend. And uh, he's going to uh, lose sight of us rather fast. Fortunately, uh, this May, May segment does not change. It's the same every time. And we know the path ahead of time, so that's very good. Um, our gentleman friend is a member of the Centra Corp, sort of like the OSHA entity or like the union. Um, so they, he's basically saying like, yeah, something's going on here. And we're like, oh, thank goodness. Someone finally agrees with us. So we're very happy to see him. We're very relieved. And so he'll lead us into our little uh, meeting spot with the sort of OSHA Centra Corp. Uh, union place uh, to discuss things further. Um, uh, he will start off with a little bit of a survey and he'll say like, hey, how do you uh, find the cleanliness of the bathrooms? How do you find the cleanliness of the canteen? Uh, how are the amenities? And we're like, hold on, uh, there's there's something trying to kill us. Do you want to address that? And he's like, well, unfortunately we can't address anything until we go through the proper channels. It's a very bureaucratic place. And so as it, you know, as through the union, we have to go through the bureaucratic channels. And we say, that's not going to work at all because there's something after us right now trying to kill us. And he says, well, you know, everything has to go through the brand new CEO that was just elected. And we're like, who's the who's the new CEO? He says, well, that's Hugo. We said, oh, no, that's not going to work. Hugo is a bad guy. He's trying to kill us. This is not going to do it. And the guy says, well, our hands are tied. And this is a very bureaucratic process. We have to go through the company in the right channels. And so I don't know if we can really help you here. Um, and so we're rather alarmed at this fact. We think, oh, no, I got to get out of here. We got to talk to Sintra. This is very bad. Um, so, uh, you know. But first, uh, we're going to just maybe uh, take a little jam or a little nap in some jelly, some jam of our own. Uh, just take a little bit of a breather here. No big deal. Nothing to really worry about. Uh, we're also going to skip a cutscene uh, where we're taking a little keyboard nap here. Uh, keyboards make pretty good pillows for when you're very tired at the workplace. So, um, you know, if that's something that, you know, if you're tired during the workplace, uh, that's something you can also explore for yourself. So there is that. Uh, we're going to go and see Sintra. Sintra was playing with a little bit of Legos there, so not a big deal. She seems rather busy at the moment, so uh, instead we're going to make our way out of the office here. No problem. Uh, just taking another jam nap over here. Still nothing to worry about. Our friend Wally the Wonk is over on the right there. He does want a hug from us. Unfortunately, that's not really something we're interested in at the moment, so we're just going to say hi and bye to him as we walk by um, and try not to get his attention there. So all good there. Uh, as we head up the stairs here, uh, we will have these exploding walking mines now, which is great. I will top off on my health here as well, because uh, the last thing you want is to die on the way out. <laughs> so don't really want that. Uh, so I'm going to top off on my health here. We're going to head up to the 10th floor and we're going to discover that all along, Super Toad was Hugo. <gasps> Big shock. What? what? Big surprise. Big surprise. Oh my Big gosh. reveal here. He's going to get up on the desk and reveal that he was Super Toad the whole time. Uh, fortunately, Brian has put two and two together. He's very um, clever, and he already knows that fact. But, I mean, for me personally, it was a big shock. Uh, I had no idea. So, uh, yeah, we'll get that out of the way. Big reveal. And so uh, Brian's not really impressed with that, and he says, look... Um, you know, this whole thing about you killing me and like trying to kill the whole company, doing whatever you're doing, this nefarious stuff, I don't really like it. Uh, and Hugo says, well, you know what, what I don't like, I don't like you coming into this company, having this letter, and then you immediately get to work on the fifth floor and uh, you just sort of, you know, you don't really do anything. You just your first day of the job and you're already gotten promoted. Um, whereas, you know, I come from class R and I've worked my way from the dregs of society all the way up the corporate ladder to the fifth floor. And so you have no idea what I've been through. I've been through hell and back. And so uh, I really don't appreciate your tone with me. And we're like, well, that really has nothing to do with me, Hugo, because, you know, we were the ones who got the letter and we got the offer. And it's not, it's kind of, a, 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 you know, not really in our control here. So I don't really know what you're talking about. And Hugo says, I really don't appreciate that. Um, you don't really know what it's like to struggle in this company. I'm just doing my best. And we're like, well, I don't really know what that has to do with us. Uh, and Hugo says, well, uh, here's what it has to do with you. You're fired. And so we think, oh, I guess that is something that you can do as the new CEO. He says, hey, take this dismissal letter um, and just go to the, the first floor, go to the, go to the lobby and get out. And we think to ourselves, you know what? That actually sounds like a really good idea. We've been trying to be, get fired this whole time. And so that's actually a great bit of advice. Uh, and so, yeah, we'll do just that. I'm going to just check my health here. Okay, we're good to go. 
And so uh, we will do just that. We're coming up on the end of the run here on our way out of here. Um, and so we're going to heed his advice and take that dismissal letter and uh, get, get out. <laughs> and so uh, that's all fine and good. We've accomplished our goal of getting fired as quickly as possible. And I'm sure everyone else will be fine and figure it out. Um, I'm sure there's nothing really to worry about there. Um, so we're coming up on time here. That is time. And that's nice. the run. That is Yuppie Psycho, Glitchless, any percent. Uh, and uh, yeah, so again, this run uh, really showcases only, not even like the first half of the game. It's really not a whole lot at all. So if you are definitely intrigued by this speed run, we highly encourage you to pick up this game. It is on Steam. It is on Switch. It is constantly on sale. It's a delightful game. Shout outs to Baroque Decay again for this wonderful, wonderful uh, game. It's a great speed game as well as a great casual game. Love to play it. Uh, it's one of my favorite games. Um, and uh, yeah, Nicole, anything to add before we finish up here? No, just thank you for having me. I, I love this game so much. It's really fun to watch you do it. Yeah, it's so much fun to play. Uh, I had a lot of fun uh, routing this game and learning it and uh, also playing it casually, getting all the endings. Oh, it's just, and the community is wonderful. Uh, it's honestly just, it's so great. So uh, that's really, that's it for me. Um, anything else before we uh, head on out here? Yeah, Ready? so I just had... I just sure. had a quick question because I know this mm -hmm. is very, very, very much like a traditional work day. Is this something mm -hmm. like if I was in an HR office, is something that I would show to my new employees aside from the end part about getting fired? Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, I'm just sorry. I missed your question. Sure. Can you repeat it? Hmm? Oh. I missed uh, your question. Sorry. Oh, no, you're fine. I said ba I said that this is a great game from what you, from what I've seen, like a, the traditional work base. So I think if, the, if I was an HR, do you think this would be like a good, like day one video, like right as you start? Oh, certainly. Yeah. I think this would make yeah. a great uh, training for your first corporate job. Uh, it's got everything. It's got the mouth on the wall. It's got the jam naps. It's got uh, getting your steps in all very important parts of um, becoming part of the corporate cog, so to speak. So yeah. So um, yeah, highly encourage you to learn from the game as well as play it. So there is that. So um, yeah, if, 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 if I, if anyone was interested in maybe they, maybe they're like, oh, I'm an HR and I want to showcase, you know, this particular video or maybe another side of the video for my, for all of my new employees where would they go to get more information about that um yeah so uh in general i would say uh there's 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 many i mean there's there's so much in this game just to, to peruse through um i would say the gameplay itself uh there's many online communities as well that you can join uh that could help you through your first day of work perhaps you're like i don't know really how, know how to get to the giant mouth in the wall i don't really know what to say when i get there plenty of uh communities online that'll help you through that um walkthroughs that are not like they're spoiler free for example so there's many many different resources you could leverage uh across the internet as well to uh teach you through that first work day in one piece so uh there is that to consider yeah, and uh, on all serious, in all seriousness, if people were interested in following any one of y'all, <laughs> oh, that's what you meant. I was just like, they finding stuff out about the game. <laughs> I, I know. I was, okay, I was so, playing along with the. I was playing along with the bid. If people were interested to know more about the speed run, where would they go? Gotcha. Okay, so the speed run itself, I highly recommend going to speedrun.com and uh, joining the uh, Yuppie Psycho uh, Discord. It is on speedrun.com on the main page. Uh, it's a, it's again a great resource, a great community. All that still tracks, um, and uh, and there's many online communities as well that um, rally around like just the, the in general gameplay. Also, the Baroque Decay Discord is a great resource as well. They love the speedrunners of this game. Uh, you can find me on Twitch.tv/slash Bath and Jan, um, and that's uh, I sometimes stream there. <laughs> <laughs> and you can also find me on Twitter <laughs> at uh, Bath and Jan underscore, where I'm most likely screaming about this game or other games that I speed run. Uh, so there's that. Uh, Nicole? Yeah, so I also stream mm -hmm. on twitch.tv slash Nicole Goodnight. And I am on Twitter at NR Goodnight. And actually, you can often find Bath over on my stream <laughs> as we <laughs> speed run various other games. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Yeah, and so uh, that's it for me. Uh, we just want to say thank you so much, GDQ, for uh, inviting us on again. Uh, it's it's just always a pleasure to run, and, and Yuppie Psycho is a great game, so I'm super, super happy to showcase it with you today. Thank you so much for that. Yeah, well, thank you both so very, very much for showcasing that. Uh, awesome. That, I believe, will do it for tonight here on the Perfect. GDQ Hotfix. Uh, we will have so many other great runs. We do have some... Good stuff coming up tomorrow right here at twitch.tv slash games done quick tomorrow at 1 p.m. Eastern. And do not forget that Fright Fatals will be 
Sunday, yes. October 23rd, to celebrate spooky season with dark, scary, or horror-themed speedruns from the Frame Fatales community. For more information, use exclamation mark fright in Twitch chat to see the schedule. And finally, do not forget, awesome games done quick. 2023 online will be January 8th to the 15th. Head to gamesdonequick.com for more information. While the game submissions have are closed, the second submission period for games released after September 1st will be coming up November 6th to the 12th. Go visit gamesdonequick.com for more details. And like I said, I think that will be it. We'll be uh, moving along and we'll see you all later. Have a wonderful, wonderful evening. Thank you so much, GDQ. Bye, Twitch chat. Bye, everybody. See you later. Bye. 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 Bye.